Well, good morning. This is Lou Benninger. And you've had the good fortune of stumbling across us today. This is Live with Lou. And this is, uh, out, this is a Patriot uh, radio station out here on Mount Hooth in East, East Yuba County. And it's called 1410 AM. We're out here in uh, above the cannabis cloud. And I hear there's all kinds of action going on in the foothills. They're raiding all sorts of big marijuana grows up there. You probably have heard all about it by the time you hear this show. But uh, a lot of good things are happening out there. And we have uh, three hours to talk with you uh, today. And I want to give a shout out to all the folks out there in Hagerman, Idaho. Uh, we used to just have one couple that transplanted out of Marysville. And now they have recruited two or three other people or one person or something. Our number, somebody asked me this last week, how many people are listening? I said, I don't have any idea. We, you know, when we started, people say, oh, I listened. So we would count them, right? So now we figure we have over 50 people. So out there in Hagerman, maybe we'll get a bigger audience in Yuba Sutter. We'll see. So also I want to give a shout out to the guys at Juvenile Hall, guys and gals at Juvenile Hall. That's the cannabis club over there. They, they're listening in their cells. If they've been good, they get to have a radio, and then they get to listen to me if they want to or their music. So, uh, so I'll be gone for a couple of weeks, but I'll be back over there when I arrive, uh, back on the 26th, and I'll be back in Juvenile Hall hanging out with you guys and ladies. So uh, if you're new to this, uh, I don't know where you're listening from. We're out here in Northern California, what we like to call the hopeful state of Jefferson. And we broadcast over a variety of uh, counties, maybe portions of five counties, but pretty strong in a couple. So if you have a hard time listening, it's a little iffy and scratchy. You can go on our, ra- our website at kmycradio.com and click on the listen live and hopefully the live stream is working. But if that's difficult for you or you get interrupted and you think, Oh, I'm going to go back and listen to that show again. You can actually do that. If you go to a YouTube channel called one eye blind media. Now some may say, Oh yeah, we tried that. And it, your show wasn't there. Well, that happened last a uh, couple weeks ago. We, we recorded it, we thought, and then it fell into the Bermuda triangle of technology. And we lost it. I don't even know how you lose things like that. I lose physical things all the time, but the show was lost, so it didn't get posted. But one eye blind media, four separate words with a space in between. Look for, then click on listen to live, uh, live with Lou, and you can pick the show you want to listen to. So there's a couple options. You can listen now. You can listen uh, to the uh, live stream on KMYC, or you can listen to the YouTube one eye blind media that it takes a few hours, probably a half day for them from the time we finish here from the time they post it. So the unique thing about today, usually we do this live every Saturday. If you're new to this, we're on for from nine to noon, three hours. If you go to one eye blind media, you can listen in the middle of the night. So, uh, but normally we're live, but today, we are pre-recorded. It's a new show. We're not doing holdovers, warmovers, or the worst of, uh, because we, uh, Santos, the wiki man, the guy that's keeping me out of the techo techno ditch. Uh, we, he and I couldn't be here together, but we have reconciled. So we, we hang out together and we try to be together as much as possible on the show, but I couldn't make it on that Saturday. So we're just giving you some fresh stuff. But it is recorded, so you can call the show, but you'll just get a recording, and you can leave the big kahuna that runs this place your complaints or your uh, praise. And, of course, you can always send in your checks and all kinds of uh, money to us. We'll take any money uh, you can give us. I want to mention that we are supported by a number of my friends uh, that uh, lots of people don't like me. But uh, I don't worry about those who don't like me. I'm, I'm really interested in the people that like me. So those are Greenitz Construction and uh, Ted Holmes, who runs the uh, Plumbing Doctor. And you'll hear their advertisements on here. But a lot, of, uh, a lot of times, because their advertisements run on the station, I don't mention them a lot. But we've been friends for over 40 years and since we were youngsters. 
and they're great guys. They're good friends of mine. Whenever I have a problem at my house, I just give them the keys and tell them to go get them, fix it. And uh, they're great guys and very honest and do top quality work. So Greenest Construction, he, d he does bathroom and kitchen remodels, all kinds of amazing stuff. I asked him the other day, Dave, how, how busy he was, and he, he quoted some date off in the future. I thought maybe Jesus would return before he'd get caught up. But uh, he said, now if, for him, for you to get him to do your job, you need to take a personality test because he's just not going to work for anybody. But Ted Holmes is a great guy. Anytime I wash the dishes and the water runs out under the sink onto the floor or out in the out in, outside and it steams up in the garden, which is a bad sign, or when I flush the toilet and it comes back at me instead of going outside, I know enough on YouTube you can study those things, you know. And uh, so I called Ted. I said, Ted, it, something ain't right over here. I don't know what it is. So he comes and makes all things right in my life. Uh, when I lose my peace in life, those guys get me back on track. So those guys support us as well as uh, we used to call it the Sutter Views Tea Party Patriots, but they are – kind of morphing or uh, evolving into what we call the Yuba Sutter Constitutional Republicans. And they're trying to get their mojo on again to have an impact on the way this part of the country is run. So uh, they show up tomorrow on Sundays at what they call the Yuba Sutter Political Spotlight from 1 to 3. So you can check them out there and find out what, what their skinny is on their meetings, when they're going to meet. Uh, they're not going to meet as often, but uh, they're trying to organize some activism to make a difference. And the other people, the fourth person, the fourth group, is uh, Universal Elite Security, and that's Monty Hecker, who started a little business out here years and years ago after he retired from the Air Force and a security business. Uh, and now it's grown big. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine, and she said, oh, I got a job. And I said, oh, where'd you get a job? And Because she'd been looking for quite a while. And she said, I'm, I'm dispatching. I said, where are you dispatching? And uh, are, you, are you guessing, Wiki Man? Are you, you guessing? And anyway, she said, I'm working for Elite Universal Security. I thought, oh, I love that. So anyway... Elite Universal Security is operating out of Yuba County, but they, they operate in a number of counties up here in the North State, Yuba, Sutter, Butte, up in Shasta County. And you can get a job over there, and that and they'll actually train you, and you can take classes to be a security guard. You can work in the office. You can be a dispatcher maybe. That's where this lady got a job. So you can dial them up at 749-0280, or somebody's just – every time you, like, get stuff, that somebody else takes it whether you got a business or a house or, or a farm or a manufacturing plant or whatever, Elite Security will help keep track of stuff for you and keep the tweakers out of your business. And so uh, they have helped. They get, they're all over my neighborhood because uh, after Robert Bendorf over at Yuba County created the Bendorf Zoo, he recreated my community, and it's like Tweakerville in my community, and I'm going to instead of duck blinds shooting ducks i'm gonna put tweaker blinds down in my front yard and rent out space so we can hunt tweakers uh and i'm gonna make a little money off this being downtown marisol if they're gonna let if they're gonna welcome tweakers you know if you flood ground out there in, in yuba county ducks will show up did you know that they just show up they think they look down from above they think that looks like something i'm interested in and so robert bendorf has created an environment for tweakers in downtown Marysville and boy we got them and uh it's like it's like a humming I try to sleep at night and work during the day but those folks like to do business at night and they like to sleep during the day and uh we we need to get on the same page me and the tweaker so we're working on that and so uh if you want to get a job call elite universal security at 7490280 or if you got problems with people like using your front door as for a toilet or stashing stuff in your stashing stolen property call monty hecker to elite universal security he helped you and um, they'll teach you how to shoot if you need to learn how to shoot somebody they will teach you how to shoot get you a permit so you can do it the right way and if you want to tase somebody or spray chemicals all over somebody i was in juvenile hall one night and they got i got my 
face. I got sprayed in there with pepper spray one night with the kids. They started fighting, and everybody got hosed down. So if you want to get out there and learn how to use that, spray somebody and do it right and not get sprayed yourself, go check out Elite Universal Security. On July 28, 29, they're going to teach you how to get certified to operate a handgun, go out there and practice at the range, hit the target, and go in there and get yourself a, a, a permit. And also, you know what I like about it? You know, if you ever need a live scan, you got to make all kinds of a special appointments. They don't do it every day at the sheriff's department. You can just pop in out there Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, and I'm telling you, they'll slam a live scan together. You'll be on your way and be happy, happy as a clam. So uh, I guess that covers everything. Okay, how you doing over there? All right, it's good to have you. It's good to have you back, man. It was like I was a little. I I like. My, I think my blood pressure was up last week. Jason did an amazing job. We couldn't have been on the air without Jason. And uh, he, I think he was freaking out a little bit. And I was freaking out. The glass was like getting misty and everything in between us. Anyway, thank God for Jason Reichert. He came out here around the board for me. We couldn't have been. That was two weeks ago. Uh, so anyway, thanks for listening. So. You're, you've been listening or watching all this crazy stuff going on the border, the Mexican border, right? And uh, even though uh, for years before Trump even probably thought about running for president, they've been separating kids from families, kids from parents, and, and you know, they've had some protocols and procedures they've done. In fact, in Yuba County, if you get arrested in Yuba or Sutter County and your kids are in the car, or your kids are in your drug lab with you, you got a drug lab in your house, or you got heroin in your house, or you're doing the wild thing in your house, and they arrest you, but they, the kids are just innocent bystanders, don't be thinking you're going to get a condom minimum over there at Yuba County Jail and bringing those kids along in their trikes. They're going to get separated from you. That's the way it is in every single th over 3,000 counties in the United States of America, you get separated from your kids until you can get your ducks in a row and act right. So that happens at the border and all these liberals are just pissing against the wind over the whole thing, freaking out and, uh, and getting a lot of attention to try to make president Trump look bad, but he isn't the one who is attacking the border from the South side. He made a comment the other day. He says that people would just quit illegally want to come in and just come through the right door and get it get the papers right we'd be happy but that isn't working out so i thought what an opportunity because i met someone here a few months ago and she was one of the ladies or one of the people that not only smuggled people but smuggled contraband across the border and she is from mexico but she's now here and she has a story to tell i thought instead of me trying to convince you of my perspective on something I thought may, may be interesting to just hear like what's shaking down below the border and what people are up to. So I have Yoli with me today. Yoli, welcome. Hi, Luna. So nice to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And so you can tell sh she and I don't speak the same language because she's got a little, she's got a better accent than I have. I always wanted to speak Spanish like I told my friends. I said my parents didn't speak Spanish, so if I wanted to learn, I had to take a class. She, she's already got it under control. And so thank you for being here. I appreciate it so much. So um, why don't we just start with uh, where were you raised in Mexico? And tell us a little about, about your upbringing. Well, I was born and raised in Tijuana. It's a border yep. city, right. you know, so I grew up. And a block away from my house, you could see the the fence yes. that divides the United States, you know. And ever since growing up, I always knew that if you look that way, it's money. Money. Yeah. Okay. Everybody knows that line means money. You know, and I was young when I can tell you I have memories like maybe eight. Uh -huh. I already knew that, you know. Ma so you have mom and dad and siblings. Yeah. Yes, I have um, two siblings and my mom and my dad. Well, okay. my, my mom walked out on us when I was yeah. like four months, according yeah. to the story. But my dad got to with this lady that she's my mom. She raised me. She right. loves me. She bends backwards for me. Okay. You know? and so 
so as you grew up as a youngster, did you go to school there? You go to elementary school, yep. high school? Kindergarten, elementary, and I, I did up to like seventh grade, okay. translated to English, you know? Okay. So uh, at some point, uh, were you involved in like, did you wonder about all the border activity? Was there talk in the community about people going through the border, going to the United States? Was that a topic of discussion in, in oh. your family? Oh yeah, uh, it always it always was it always was a topic in the neighborhood because, like I said, I grew up like a block away from you the could border, see it, right? And everybody's like, "Whoa, so and so just you know went to the states and they're making dollars and da da da." And people will come back with money and buy the kids dolls and stuff. Right. So I even have memories of my grandma. My grandma is a U.S. citizen. Yeah. I didn't know at the time, you know, but I have memories of her coming to Tijuana with huge boxes of yum yum donuts so it was okay. like the amazing thing you know yep. one time she took us some shoes that had glow in the dark dinosaurs so we were like the coolest kid in the neighborhood yeah. and stuff it was like memories you know so yeah so at obviously i'll just lead into this because uh yoli has been involved in criminal activity uh, in bringing people across the border and also smuggling uh, in, in the United States, smuggling narcotics. So let's get into, you know, how, how that you went from this youngster raised in Tijuana, family, school, and how did it, did you go from there to like uh, illegal activity of bringing people in? And when did that happen? How did it all come about? Well, um, it, uh, it all started when I was like around nine. My parents separated and we were just raised by Mother Nature. By the time I was like 14, my dad stopped paying for my school. So I had no other option but not to go to school because in Mexico you yeah. have to pay for right. everything. You, yeah. If you're not wearing your uniform, you cannot walk in the campus. Even if your dad paid for the semester, it don't matter. You're not wearing a uniform, you're not walking in. You have to take your own money for lunch. So... No, the, no free school, no free food, nothing. no free lunches, no. no free breakfast. No, no, no. There's not even uh, help. If you don't understand something in class, you're just dumb. Yeah. And there's not like, okay, well, if you don't understand this way, let me teach you this way. No, 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 no. Yeah. It doesn't exist, you know? Okay. So now uh, my dad's not paying for my school, and and I just got tired of waiting for somebody to throw me a coin. You know, yeah. and I said, you know what? I can't live like this, waiting for people to just hand me out things. So in Tijuana, we have a very, um, I'm sure everybody that's been in Tijuana, they all know about the red zone, La Zona Roja. And it's La Zona Norte, where it's a lot of prostitution and it's allowed. So the red I, zone. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's at my age and in my years, I had two options. Either I start in the drug business or I start prostituting. Yeah. So I started in the drug business and... At, at first, I tried to held a job in a, in a shoe shop, but it didn't work. I was, I wasn't even making it for the bus to go back home. And and a man met me one day. I was walking, and he said, "Hi, you need a ride?" And I said, "I don't need a ride. I need a car." And he just laughed at me. But then he came back and saw me, and I was still working at the shoe store. Not even a week later, and he was like, "I have a job for you." And I said, "Okay, fine." He offered me a job, and I was packaging. You know, there's the machines that compress the dope from yeah. big quantities to small boxes, right. small box. You know, so I was doing that. I did that for a while. But then. Um, so is it heroin uh, or it, methamphetamine? It was different types of drugs, even yeah. marijuana. I was just yeah. packaging whatever okay. they load they brought. So they had a packaging system. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's a big warehouse and machines. All you do is move the. A manufacturing plant. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the cartels start fighting right. back in that year. So it was, you did that for a while yeah. and you were making good money, right? Yeah. How was, much money? Well, I was making in those years and I was making maybe like uh, 300 to a thousand dollars a week. Uh, and in those years, can you give me an idea? Uh, wow. Which, it was a lot of money. Yeah. But in what years? What year? 1990s? Um, I was like maybe 15. I'm almost 40. <laughs> No, okay. Yeah. So when so you 90, were 15, you were making $1,000 a week? Yes. Okay. Packaging all kinds of drugs yes. in a manufacturing plant in Tijuana near the border. Uh, we were in the outskirts of Tijuana, but okay. it was, yeah. It Otay was Mesa area or back farther? No, no, no. Um, back then, Tijuana wasn't as large, so it's Tijuana and then Tecate. You okay, know, Tecate. Know. Okay. okay, so it was in between Tecate. 
Tijuana and Tecate okay. was a huge ranch. It was a beautiful okay. place. So I interrupted you. You yeah. started to say then the cartels began to have a problem. Yes. Um, back in the day, it was the Ariano Felix, and it was a, a local cartel. Yeah. yeah. Then they got in a bad beef with the cartel of Sinaloa. Sinaloa. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it was a slaughter. It was bad, and everybody started killing everybody. So I worked a little bit, you know, and... The Sinaloa cartel, of So course, there were just mass ex- executions, yes. correct? So they showed up and they say, if you're not working for me, you're dead, or I'll let you walk, but you're not working, you know? Yeah. So a lot of bosses were like, well, I'm going to work, but they were still doing things on the side. So one boss get killed, the other one, and I'm just an employee. So and How old now? I was like... 18 and okay. a half. Still making $1,000 a week or so? Yeah, I was making more and spending more, too. Making more. A couple <laughs> thousand a week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. And then, um, well, it was bad. It was a slaughter. The Sinaloa cartel won the territory. That was the end of the story. And they say, do you work for me? And I say, well, I'm not fighting with money, so I'll work with whoever pays. I'm just an employee. And I was working for them. But then a lot of torturing was going on and a lot of stuff. Torturing, give me a Give me a, a, one instance. Like, um, like one time I was getting ready to work and they just walked in to the house, the safe house where I was at. And they walked in with a girl and I'm like, well, whatever, you know, some guys with a girl, I don't care, you know. So and then they started heating up uh, metal pipes. Yeah. And the girl was sitting like just, I don't know, dozing. I don't know if she was drunk or she was high. I don't, I don't know. So they just put the metal pipe like. On her in face. her face, yes. On her so, cheek. R- right here. Yeah. And, and between the cheekbone and, and yeah. the forehead. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, it's my time to walk out of here. You know? <laughs> they so, burned her. Yeah. So I just got out. I don't even know the girl's name. I never looked yeah. back. There's things that you don't ask. Yeah. You know, and, and things that it's better if you don't know. Yeah. So I already knew all that. So I just walked out and I said, you know what? It's getting bad in here. It's getting bad. So I just went to the person that I was working for and I said, you know what? I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I don't want to work this area. It's getting too wild for me. It's, yeah. it's too much of a jungle. Yeah. And he said, okay, well, Miha, you know, like, supposedly he appreciated me so much, da, da, da. I'm going to hook you up with somebody else. So he calls people from Polleros. They're called Polleros. Polleros? Yeah. Okay. Th- they're the people that... Uh, Tr- chick- it's a pollo yeah. chicken. Right. Yeah, but, I, but polleros is the one that takes care of the chicken. Right. That's the pollero. pollero okay. It's like the farmer that, that gathers you. the chicken. I got you. So, chicken th- farmer. Yeah, that's exactly what. <laughs> so at the okay. end of the day. Okay, okay, I wasn't paying attention. We, we're taking a break. Go, go. Okay, we'll be right back. Did you know that Article 4, Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution lays out the framework for the state of Jefferson's plan to split California? A state can be formed from the land within another state if the state legislature and Congress approve it with a simple majority vote. 51% is all it takes. Your vote doesn't count in Northern California. California is broken and the time has come for 51. Please visit SOJ51.net and donate now to show your support. Check out the Territorial Dispatch papers a weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. All right. Welcome back. You're listening to Live with Lou. Uh, I'm here with Yoli, and we're talking today. Usually I don't do interviews, live interviews, but we have Yoli here in the studio. And the unique thing about her is that she was raised in Mexico and in scrambling around looking for a job as a teenager, going through a tough family situation. She worked at a shoe store, and then ended up working in, in a packaging plant, packaging uh, narcotics. And we were just, uh, before the break, we were just getting into uh, talking about a new career, moving from drugs, because the Sinaloa cartel came in and butchered 
the other cartels did mass executions. You may have read about those. I, I certainly did because I've done work in Tijuana. Uh, and so she got hooked up with a group of people called the Polleros. Polleros, <laughs> or the chicken farmers. <laughs> and so, and, and what's the point of that, the term? What did they do? Uh, what they call pollos is pollos? The, the immigrant the that immigrant. is coming in. They're so the pe pollos. people that want to get in the United States. They're pollos. Pollos. All of them. We call them chickens. <laughs> yeah. Pollos. Okay, got <laughs> it. And then the pollero is the one that gathers them. And I was an employee. And so, what, hold on. They pay the polleros, the, the yeah. pollos, the immigrants, pay the polleros. Yeah. How much money? Well, when I started, they were already paying like $3,500. Okay. So when you, I started. When you started, which was, you remember what year? I, I'm not good with timelines, okay. but I was between like 2019, the, the most, because Okay, I, about I, 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay. So about 20 years ago, a person would pay a pollero $3,500. Yeah. And then the pollero would turn around and he hired you yeah. to do the dirty work. Yep. I was and, the guide. And you're the guide. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so tell me about then, uh, what, how would you do it? What did um, you do? Well, at first it was all uh, practice, practice, practice. And, and, you know, like the Border Patrol, it's there. Right. It's working. They're right. doing their job. Right. You know, but um, me personally, there's guys that wait for the Border Patrol shift change yeah, to just shift change. run across because Tijuana and San Diego, they're not that big of a part. Right. So I personally didn't. I would rather have the Border Patrol just there. I want him to be there because I'm going to work around him. Right. Through, the, I'll make sure to work blind points from cameras, blind points from his car. Right. You know, he can only look at so much at a time. He's not an octopus. Right. So I would just take advantage of the little ups and downs from the floor and then you, I will. You mean on the ground where yeah. it goes up and down? So we're, what we're talking about is that Tijuana, if, if you folks out there listening, have, if you've been down there, you have the San Isidro crossing, right? Mm -hmm. At San Diego, it down into Tijuana. But then from San Isidro west to the ocean, there's a large barrier, right? Yes, that's all my turf. And that was your turf. All to, of it. To climb that fence. Yes. To get through that fence yes. and to bring the polleros no, bring, no, bring the pollos. The pollos through. <laughs> yes. That the polleros gave to you yes. after they took $3,500 a yes. piece. So how much did you get paid? When I was starting, it was only $300 a piece. You got $300 per person. Yes. So when you practice, that means you went to the fence? Yes. And, and you just, you 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 breached the front fence. You climbed I, I, it? I just... Uh, you go to the fence and then you study the your border patrol agent. What does he do? Where does he look? You study him. You yeah. study him three, four days, and yeah. then you know how he moves, and you become his shadow. Yeah. To where if he's turning left, you're walking through the right. Yeah. And and you're taking advantage of whatever blind spot he has. So at the beginning, it was only me getting across. I get it across. So once practice, you, yes. Once you get like 12, 13 times across by yourself, they're like, "Oh, well, the, you know, she's, you got this." Yeah, Let, let's test her with a few. Okay. So then they give you a full. I got to a point where I was bringing nineteen people at a time. That so was my top. Nineteen times three hundred dollars. Well, no. What, by the time I got that good to bring nineteen people at a time, I was getting more than I was getting like sometimes depending on who the pollero was, yeah. I would get from eight hundred to sixteen hundred per per person. Yes. So now that the price is at, so in the beginning you maybe took a couple people across, right? Well, a lot. <laughs> and in the very f first, when you were oh, a rookie. The first time I came in, I came in with three, and I lost all three of them. You, you, the, They got caught? Yeah, they got caught, <laughs> but I didn't. Okay. You know, like, as long as I don't get caught, they can get caught all the time. So, so when they get caught, they just they will release them back across the yeah, border? Yeah, it's just like a book and release. So it's a book and release. They do not incarcerate them? No. Okay, so uh, if you got caught, you do you just claim that you're one of them? Yes, I would say, oh, well, the the guy left us. Well, of the, course, I would the, say it in Spanish, right? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> like, the, the guide left. Yeah, the guide left el, you. El dejó, so, so you it, pretended when you got caught, if you got caught, that that you were just one of the victims. Yeah, and you yeah. just wanted to come to the they United States, us. and they would turn you back to Mexico. Yeah. So over and over and over again, it's just catch and release, catch and release, catch yeah. and release. So so you you did it in a number of years. 
and then it got up to where you're you're really good yes. and you're bringing groups of 19 people times how much money up to night between 800 to to 1600 i'm $16. getting per guide so yes. they're paying the polletos paying you that money mm -hmm. and and so he's probably getting more back yeah. then right yeah. the, the price went up so today or what do you imagine it is? Or right the now, last time, um, what, what were what was the price that the polletos were getting? The last I've heard, it was between ten thousand to fifteen. 000. Ten to fifteen thousand. Yeah. Unless you have a really good plug that you know somebody that somebody that at top a of the line, just like any yeah, other, you, you can get it. The lowest you're gonna get it is gonna be like seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yeah, and that's like because you have the plug. So some people say that the. At one time, like I played a couple clips on the radio radio here a few weeks ago where it was interviewing guys that owned property right on the border, and they were farmers, ranchers. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, at one time Mexicans would come across, and they just want to work, and they would work and go home. They'd walk back across. And it wasn't like a criminal activity. They just wanted to make money, and they wanted to be a cowboy. They were cowboys. Yeah, right? in my family, their stories, my uncles did that yeah. once upon a time, a long time ago. So now they describe it on these, the, the Border Patrol describes it as just a cartel. It's a criminal activity. It's it's corporate criminality, right? It is. It, 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 it got, it's, Tijuana, it's so rotten now. Yeah. Everything is just polluted. Yeah. You know, it's it's no longer good anymore. But yeah. yeah, it got polluted. The business got polluted and people it's just everybody against everybody, everybody taking advantage of everybody and So the cartel is the cartel involved in moving people as well as moving drugs? The cartel it's involved in giving protection. Uh, let's say me as a as a guide. Yeah. If I wasn't working directly for a main boss, I would have to pay fee to the cartel. The last time I paid fee was five hundred dollars, and that's maximum money, a lot of money. But not per person. No. Just a five hundred protection for me. Just so, five hundred dollars. How often? Um, once a month. Okay. So the police and the da 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 wouldn't bother me. They on the, wouldn't take, on the Mexican side. Yeah, they wouldn't yeah. take my pollos because there's. Um, government that it's the same if you ask me is the same the government then the cartel is the same same so Mexican government cartel same same if you ask me yeah that I have lived in a, that life you yeah. know so um, for them not to pick me up get me arrested take away my pollos or whatever I had to pay a fee to the cartel and then they would leave me alone yeah if they would stop me they would say well, okay well what's your code and I would say well today it's jumping rope and they say okay you're good bye yeah you know? jumping rope means uh no i said jumping room because it would be just a random word or whatever oh. so sometimes it would be like what's your code well my code is why and why would you use the code because i already paid my protection I oh, okay okay so yeah. oh, so they said hey uh what's your code so in yeah. other words they everybody would know she paid yeah so she's good to go yeah i got you <laughs> so uh so you did that a number how many years do you think you you moved people until i was like 26 okay so maybe what ten years or yeah, eight yeah. years, eight yeah, to ten about. years, and and then what happened? And then um, it got so bad in Tijuana that uh, when I, it was like uh, maybe seven years in, like on two thousand seven. Yes, it was like very bad in Tijuana, and I said I can't. Violent. Have, yes, very very bad, very bad. So I said I can't have my kids. I already have two kids. So I smuggle them across the border. Not me, because I'm not an expert on kids. Yeah. And and but there's families that have like tons of respect that grandpa and son and then daughter and keep generations after generations. They they only work with kids. They just move children. Yes. And they But have, not their own children, just people's children. Yeah. No, no, no. They come to the United States, they have kids here and with their their own kids' papers, they bring other kids. Okay. They use f false papers yeah. and bring other Mexican yeah, children like, through. Like this guy's daughter, yeah, she crossed my son with her son's papers. I got it. Yeah, and th that's very normal. People, Com a lot of common. people do that. Yeah, common. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you moved your kids across yes. because it was dangerous. That's yes. two children, right? Yes, two yeah. children. Okay, 
And then I I don't know how to work in the United States and I don't know the language. Yeah. So I go back to Tijuana and make money and then bring it in and spend it here and then I would and I did. So that. you went to Tijuana to make an income and yeah. just the opposite of what everybody else was doing. <laughs> yes. Because you made good money. But yeah. your children were safe. Yes. In the United States. Yes. And and I just didn't know how to make money here and then. Because you were you didn't know English yet. I didn't know English. Right. I didn't know. I have no papers. I had no papers, no legal right. status, no nothing. So I was like, uh, how do I feed? How do I pay rent? Now, I move in San Diego. San Diego rent is like $1,500 when I first landed. It was uh, $1,500 for, a, I think it was a one-bedroom apartment on yes. 45th Street in, in by university. Yeah. If anybody knows San Diego, they know who. Yeah. It's in City Heights. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fifteen hundred dollars. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now I, every time I ran out of money, so I would go to Tijuana, make money, and then come and sit on my money and spend my money with my kids and do. And then when I was running out of money, oops, time to go to Mexico, and I would. So people think of Mexicans coming here and sending their money back to Mexico. Not you me. were going there, making money illegally and bringing it in yes. the United States and to take care of your it, family. Yes. Yeah. yes, I did it for for several years. For several years, moving. <laughs> People, people, people yes. were your contraband. Yes. Yeah. So, so when did you quit that and why? I quit that when um, I got tired. I, you know what? I got greedy. You got greedy because I was good at what I was doing. I was top of the line. I already had respect. I already could have taken a bigger step, but I was like, ah, you know what? I want more money because I'm now I'm spending dollars. You were spending a lot of money. No, let me tell you, when I was in Mexico, I wasn't even saving money. I was spending my money. But here in the United States, my Mexican money was shorter. It it lasted shorter amount of time. Right. It didn't go as far. Yes. Right. I got you. So now I want more money. And then I said, I made a few phone calls and said, I want back in the dope deals. Okay. And I was back in the dope deals. Because there was more money. But you weren't smuggling it into the United States. I, I personally, me. Personally, yeah. I have never smuggled drugs, but I have had a ring of people under me smuggling the drugs. Okay. So yes. you just worked in the business? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, so did you end up at some point then, how did you, you, you end up being abducted at one time, right? That was in Mexico, yeah. Right. Was yes. that during the, before you, you moved completely into the U.S.? When I was... When I got my shot in the head, that was uh, already put my kids in the United States. Yeah. And then people know that you're pushing money, that you're making money, and they're like, where is this girl's money going if she's not, you know, yeah. cutting it with us and so so. So I get picked up, and they ask me for money. They so is is it common this this procedure of of pick, holding people hostage and demanding money? Yeah, it's called sequestro express. It's like express kidnap. Express. It, se- it's Kidnapping. bread of every day. Every day. Every They're just picking people yeah. up off the street yes. and hold you hostage yes. until you kick. How much did they ask you for? $500. Okay, so if you don't give me $500, I'll kill you. Yeah, So just like that. Okay, so what So what happened? I refused to give them the money, and I was insulted. I was like, oh, Sarah, like $500? Are you kidding? I'm worth more, you know? Yeah. You thought they were cheap selling it. Yes, and, and I was just too prideful, and I'm like, I'm going to give you nothing. You know, I'm going to give you nothing. So they took me to a far end away from the city, and they got me on my knees, and they shot me in the head, and they threw me down a cliff thinking that I was dead. And I I don't remember going down the cliff, but I remember landing, and I landed on my stomach. And I, and I was like, isn't my life supposed to, like, flash in front of my eyes or Thought something? Thought you were dead. Yeah. Yeah, you should die. But then yeah. I started thinking of my kids, and I'm like, I think I'm not dead. So yeah. I sit down and then I have all these blood running, you know, so I grab my hair and I made it into a ball right here where I feel the pain and I could look far away. I could look a little dot of a lot of dots of lights and I knew that was the city and I knew if I made it there, I would make it, you know, so I yeah. walk from around 8 p.m. to like dawn. Yeah. Sunrise. Yeah. Because I, I don't. They, you just walk towards yeah, the light. They took my my cell phones, my jewelry, my my watch, everything. So I have no track of time. But I know they pick me up like around seven, six, yeah. and I know I I when I landed to the first neighborhood, it was sunrise. Yeah. That's all I you know. So um, I was terrified, and then I remember I was like in a panic mode, 
Like every time I heard a noise, I was like hiding and thinking that they were coming back for me. They found out I'm not dead and I'm in a panic mode and I, I'm never going to forget the person that helped me. His name was Roberto mm -hmm. and I was hiding like next to a car because I heard him coming yep. and he said, um, hi, are you okay? And I opened my eyes and I said, no, I'm not. I need to hide and I need to make a phone call. And he said, okay. And he took me into his house and um, I made the phone call and... And then I, he gave me a dollar and I wrote the, he gave me another shirt and I put another shirt because all my clothes was bloody. I put another shirt on top of my clothes and, and I just wrote to the nearest a point because I called my friend and I said, hey, and everybody's already knowing like, hey, yeah, we thought you were dead. And I'm like, oh my God, everybody knows now. So he's like, you need to hide because they're looking for you. And I said, that, that's fine. So why didn't you go to a hospital? Because if I go to the hospital, they're going to turn me in. They're so gonna, the hospital would turn you into the shooters and yeah, then finish the job. they're going to call and they're going to say, hey, you didn't do the job right. She's in room 16. So that's Tijuana. Yeah. <laughs> that's Tijuana. So so you survived yes. uh, by just taking care of yourself with the gunshot to the head. Yes. And, yeah. um, the the not, bullet. The bullet went in and out. Yes. Yeah. So not that day, but the next day at night, I cross the border and I bring myself to the United States and I say, I'm not going to Tijuana no more. This is too much. Okay. So that's when I come to the United States to live to the United States. Stay here. Yes. Uh, two days after my shot. So then did you begin to move uh, drugs yourself in the United States? I began to do uh, table work. They call it table. Um, and it's like breaking down. I actually, I don't know. Can I say what I was doing? Yeah. I was uh, transforming uh, heroin to China White. China White is the supposedly heroin for the rich. Yeah. If anybody Better knows quality. about it. Uh, it's, it's trash. Trash. You know, but at the end of the day, that's what they want. So that's what we make. It's trash compared to what <laughs> the, you started with. Yeah, well. So you're cutting it? Are you cutting it? It's it's a form of a cut, but it's kind of transforming, flipping the okay. the the tar to yeah. a powder. So you made you so that was what you did next. Yeah. So you, I already have experience on this. I already know how to work the table from my youth. So when I get here, I just make a few phone calls and I say, "Well, I'm not coming back." And da 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 da. They're like, "Okay, well, let me call somebody." And then I start doing table work, and I'm packaging and I'm breaking down and transforming from heroin to shine away. Yeah. That's what I'm doing at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. And so from there, how did did you transition to something else, or did you you did that for a number of years? Yes, I did that for a, a long period, and then I stopped because I was pregnant and I didn't yeah. want it to be around the chemicals and stuff. Then I stopped for every pregnancy, and yeah. um, each time you were pregnant, yeah. you got because of the fumes and the yeah, dust yeah. or whatever. So, did, was there a place in the United States you didn't do it in your apartment? Did no. you? You did it in some sort of a, There's a business. There's tons of houses. There's tons of buildings or houses, houses where they're processing. People just rent houses and, and... And they're processing heroin in houses yeah. in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. They just set up a little business. Crystal, in there. meth, ice, whatever you name it, there's... Yeah. Their houses processing. Yeah. yeah. So you did that for a while. You had... Uh, did you have... Now we're up to four children? I'm... Yes. So you have four children. At the end of my, when I have my last one, um, I went into transporting. Okay. So I said, I don't want to work tables no more. I'm too lazy. I need an upgrade. And then I start uh, getting people that will bring it from Mexico. Yeah. So I'm the contact between the boss and the community. I'm talking to, now I'm dealing with um, gang members and stuff, and I'm getting you know, these white girls or white guys or American natives, yeah. whatever they are, right. that look decent enough to send them to Tijuana and have them bring a load. Okay. And then I'm... So they're going to drive a load right through the border at San Isidro, yeah. possibly? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would get another driver to drive it here in the United States from San Diego to New Jersey. To where? New Jersey. New Jersey. From East Coast to West Coast, or from West Coast, Coast to, East, to yeah. East Coast. Yeah. You name so you it. just move it. Yes. Yeah. So you were uh, more of a coordinator at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and so uh, we're gonna we're talking to Yoli. We're talking about the business, the illegal businesses on the south south of the border. 
that we're trying to get a hold on and the liberals don't think it's any big deal and donald trump's trying to say it is a big deal we'll be right back we're going to talk to yoli for another hour probably or part of an hour uh hang with us All right. Welcome back. You're listening to Lou Benninger live with Lou, and I'm here with Yoli. We've been talking about the border. We've been talking about Mexico. We've been talking about the people trade, the the drug trade. And uh, we began to talk before the break about Yoli's transition from uh, converting heroin in, into China white uh, to organizing people that transported uh, kilos of heroin around the United States. But I want to go back because I, uh, we have limited time to talk to her today. So I want to go back below the border because there's controversy with the liberals of this country saying, you terrible ICE people, we want to destroy you because you're, you're, you're punishing and you're uh, harassing children and their parents. So Yoli, uh, you were in the business for years. What was the technique, uh, and what's up with these kids? And, and what, what were you trying to do? And how were you ma- manipulating around the American immigration system? Okay, well, um, this is something that I always knew it happened. And I did it myself. And it happened before me. And it kept happening after me. So this is what it was. If a mom came with me to a, with a child, I'll say, well, you know what? This is how it's going to be. I'm going to charge you $3,500 and I'm going to surrender you to the Border Patrol. I'm not going to surrender you if you don't pay me the first. <laughs> so for right. starts, you have to pay take me. Take the money. Yes, take the money. Then I would surrender the mom and the kid to the Border Patrol. And I would tell the, the lady, check this out. They're going to separate you from their child. It's okay. Don't panic. Don't freak out. They're going to give the child papers because he's a minor. And they're going to give him to an, a place in the United States. And most likely, because you're the mom, you're going to get to stay. But if it happens that you don't get to stay, don't take the child back. Sign your, um, it was a voluntary departure. And, 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 and you come out and you come and look for me. Voluntary uh, departure. She's in the United States. She's with her kid. The, the, they, the, they take the child. They yes. give it some sort of documents. They put them in a, a place of, of safety or whatever and and she signs a document because they say you can't come in i'm going to go back voluntary yes. departure i leave no no harm no yeah. foul sometimes the kids were uh given to the relatives that they have here in the united states okay because i heard many stories they always talk to me about it yeah. oh well my, my kid it's already with her dad or with her the aunt or whatever yeah, my yeah. sister yeah. Blah, blah, blah. okay so now she comes voluntary departure don't take the kid that was like a must so the you, kids so in other words you didn't even sneak them in you just walked up and gave them to the yeah. border patrol <laughs> i surrendered and then, them then you brought the, then the woman came back out and then you then what'd you do with her i would smuggle her all the way in then you then you took her through a different route and, and, and smuggle her, her all the across, way yeah all the, the way fence, across yes. over the fence or sometimes i would use um you know those claw claw jaws that the fire department uses to break the cars? jaws of life yeah those ones i would use them to pop the the pipes the from pipes. the drain holes and Boom, boom, and we would open a pipe, and we would go pipe, and you'd go through the fence. Go through the drain holes, the underground. Yeah. Okay. So the drain hole that is between Mexico and the United States. Yes. Where the line divides, there's tubes, very thick tubes that you cannot bend, just like nothing. So I would go and get this machine, and I will come and boom, pop, pop pop one of those. Pop the cover. Yeah, and then just open it and sleep. and you would, they would go underground yeah we will come underground and we will end up through the drain pipes yeah and yeah. come in the united like, states there's tons of ways you don't actually have to jump the fence i would jump the fence if i could if if, if it was yeah. possible and it was a way for me to get in but if i couldn't get in through the top i'll get in through the bottom i would get in somehow you know but let me tell you out of 10 moms that i did this for i'm just giving you a small number yes Eight of those would get to stay in the United States, and two yeah. of those would come back to me and said, "Hey, well, they already gave my kid to their dad, but they didn't let me stay. It's, it's okay. You already paid me. I'm gonna take you in." And I would take them in, 
and right. deliver them to their house. You know, and and now the kid has and, papers in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, you're saying that almost all the mothers eventually got in. Yes. Even though, and the kid also got in. The kid always got to stay. Yeah. They never threw back out a kid. So in other words, people just keep getting rejected, and they you just run them back through yeah. another way. Yeah. Just keep. It's yeah. Just, I just, it's told, just a I just always told him, just don't take the kid back. Leave the kid there because eventually they're going to give it to a relative. So I have a, an article that I was going to cover today if we had time. But it's a whole article on Central Americans. They're they're in the they're in detained. They're detained. Their kids are separated, and they're they're voluntarily leaving, just like mm -hmm. you said. And they refuse to take their kids. Of course, because they can always come back through the wrong door. Yeah. And they're just come. They're gonna come in right through. Exactly. And the kid already has papers. Why would I take out the kid? Right. And, and that's been happening, like I said, since I was there, and it happened before I was there, and it's going to keep continuing. Everybody knows it on the other side of the border. In Mexico. Yeah. In and Mexico. so you denied that you said Americans are stupid <laughs> when well, I talked to you before this. So, well, so, but, but I think you said it, and they okay. are stupid. I, I could have said it, you know, in my life. <laughs> you weren't being disrespectful. You're just no. saying Back in my life when I was doing all that, I, yeah. I had no respect for the United States because I was like, Look at how I I I was so good at coming in. I would I would laugh at them because I was so good at coming in, and I would come in with a load of people. So I at one point I did thought of that, you know, yeah. and, and I maybe it was before I decided to live in the United States. Because let me tell you one thing: when I decided to live in the United States, out of respect for my own decision to live in this land, I put myself and I learned the language. Because I said, okay, it's my decision to live here. I'm going to learn the language. And I didn't went to no school, no no community school. No, I learned in my house, and I know my English is not that great. But I I, I started to cherish this yeah, land, you. you know. But when I was making money, I was like, dude, they're stupid. Yeah. I, I, I do whatever I want with that yeah. border. Yeah. And and let me tell you. There's so the way I took it is that we're politically stupid. Oh, yeah. Because if we really wanted to stop this. We could stop this. Now, let me tell you, this political issue comes higher in Mexico. We have communities yeah. of, like, Al-Qaeda, you can say. And l listen. Al-Qaeda. Yeah. So they're terrorist communities. Okay. Let me explain to you. Okay. They're, um, the, the cartel allows them to live there. So they're from other countries, and yeah. they want to do harm to the United States. Not exactly like that. Okay. They're allowed to live in that. They're not allowed to have any weapons. You're not allowed to carry guns. You're not allowed to. And this is all rules that the cartel gives them because the government don't care who lives in Mexico. Yeah. You can go live in Mexico, and they don't even want to know your name. Yeah. It's not like the United States that they want to know who you are. Right. Not in Mexico. So the cartel has these people and say, okay, you're only allowed to be here. You cannot carry no weapons. You cannot get close to my borders because you're going to bring heat to my area. So they're not allowed to do nothing but live. You know, so one day when I was doing office job, I was pregnant. And office job means I was... Office job for the cartel. Yeah. I was yeah. like picking up money from people that had to pay a fee and dropping money to the different government levels and stuff. I was doing office job, right? Supposedly office yeah. job, whatever. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so... I go to this, they send me to this neighborhood, right? And it's like this gated community. I'm like, wow, well, you know, they're like, you can see that there's money flow. You know, that that was my word back yeah. then. You can tell when there's money flow because you can tell when there's money flow yeah. anywhere. So I walk into this. It was like two little apartment buildings and they're connected in the middle. And it was like, oh, my God, the decor in those apartments were like, psh, they'll blow your mind. You could tell as soon as you walk in there that there was like tons of money in there. Yeah. So I walk in there and of course the person that greeted me, it's not the person that I'm picking up the money from. And I walk in there and I, you could totally tell, tell that he was like, I don't know, I don't want to say the wrong word, like an Arab, Iraqi yeah, or yeah, something. Right. You could totally from the Middle he, East. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Let's put it like that. So you can totally tell he's like this person, right? And and he's like, oh, so who are you? And I'm like, Psh, I'm whoever you wanted to be. I'm not going to give you my name. You know, you can call me Juanita for all I care. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, right. I don't care. So then, and he's like, so what do you do? And I said, I do whatever I want. And he was like, well, you have an attitude. And I said, well, I don't know you. You know, so we kind of got in the, off in the wrong foot. But 
when I kept going in there and then I kept asking questions like, hey, who's these people? Da, 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 da. They all had documents to come in the country. To the U.S.? Yes. They, they had U.S. documents. They don't even need to smuggle themselves in the, in the country. They come in through the door with papers. Wow. With papers. Because when, like, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. The people that, like, you could say, like, top of the line bosses, they all have papers and all their kids are U.S. citizen. Okay. So, so if you guys are worried about the little, <laughs> that is the least of your worries. Yeah. People with money are coming in and they are really with the wrong intentions. Right. But since they have money, they have the paper to come in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that it, it always like blew my mind because I was like, whoa. And so these folks, the, uh, what was the term you used uh, about their, 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 where they lived? It, it like a gated community? Uh, Al Qaeda or? Yeah, Al- something. They yeah. were. So, but they were all living together yeah. in a general area in yeah. Tijuana. It, it's okay. like a gated community that they have in a nice, nice top of the line area in Tijuana. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, like I said, once I get to know them and then I see the brands that they're carrying and I'm so, like, so when when uh, there's an article I have here, I don't know what I get to today, but it talks about a lot of criminals coming in the United States as well from Mexico, including terrorists. Donald Trump made a big thing about that when he ran for office, and people said, "Oh, you're calling all Mexicans criminals and terrorists." He said, "No, I didn't say that. I said that border is so porous that all kinds of people are coming in. We don't have a control on it." Yeah. So would you say that's accurate? That's accurate. Yeah. That's accurate because out of 10 so people... So MS-13 people, you've seen them? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, out, out of 10 people that are coming in, I can tell you that half of that already been deported for a crime. Yeah. And three of those are with the American dream of coming and working. Yeah. But the rest, it's, Criminals. it's bad. That's yeah. criminal. So yeah. seven out of 10, I can tell you. Seven out of 10 are, are bad. Yes. Okay, as opposed to people that the the liberals would say here... These people are just have a, a difficult life in Mexico. They just want a better life. You say three out of ten, just because you didn't do any research. You're just saying that's my feeling. Yes, out, out of my experience. Your experience. And I can tell you that, like to claim asylum, people that actually been tortured or they're actually in danger, that would be one out of ten. And most of them, it could, could be a made-up story. You guys are not checking in Mexico and. People coach people every day in Mexico about these things. On the asylum. Yes. So we, we know even people in the jail that are trying to, at Yupa County Jail, I, ICE facility, are claim, trying to claim asylum, right, that are foolish. Yeah. yeah they're just making yes. a story up. Yeah. So let, let's go back now and let's talk about you you were managing transporting of heroin, but somehow you, you actually did did you transport yourself? Did you do some transporting yourself or no? no not exactly. I would um, I would have somebody else drive. So you just coordinated it. Yeah. But you got arrested at one point, correct? Yeah, because let's say if I was sitting in Arkansas and you would bring me the car, I would high five you, take you to the airport, you would fly to wherever it is that you're coming from, and I would keep your car with the drugs and I would make the deal. And then that's how I get busted. Yeah. So the car came to you. The person took the risk of driving it there. You met them, and it was loaded with kilos of heroin. Yes. Like how many? It had the car had thirteen, and I had one already in my position in kilos. my bag. Yeah. So, uh, so then the, at some point the government began to follow you, right? Or, um, or were they they figured out you were of concern? Well, they, um, somebody made a phone call, and it was a person that knew me. Made a phone call and reported me. Okay. And when I get arrested, they're like, who are you? Why are you in my city? Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know? So when I get arrested, they only find the one kilo that I had in my personal bag. Because in my yeah. personal bag, it was, um, I had one. Yeah. So they only find that. Plus but, money. Yeah. You had money. Yes. Lots of money. Lots of money. Yeah. But um, then they x-ray the car or they dog search. I don't know what they did with the car. They yeah. found the rest. But I... Of course, I said I didn't know the car had any. I'll take the rep for the one I had. And, you right. know, it went back and so forth. So you went to prison? Yes, I did. For how long? I did uh, two years' fed time. Three? Two. Two, two. or three? Two. 
too. And uh, where were you incarcerated at? What? FCI Dublin. Dublin, yes. California? Right here, 35 minutes away from the Bay. Bay Area, mm-hmm. Dublin, California. And so after you served your uh, term for your crime, then what happened? I go to immigration hold. So the process is like uh, Yuba County, for, since the early 90s, we've had an uh, ICE facility or INS facility holding immigrants. But, uh, but all those people have served their time for their crime. But now the, at issue is whether or not the government will allow them to remain in the country, go back to wherever they're living, right? Right. Or go back to wherever they came from, right. their, their home that they started, Brazil, China, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. right? So then you were moved to an uh, ICE facility or uh, holding facility to, yes. to debate whether you're going to get to stay here with your, with your family, yes. right? And so that was somewhere in California as well? Yes. Okay. And then somehow you ended up coming up to Yuba County, eh? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that brings us up till recently. And so you, how long were you in California? Uh, deportate the hold from the immigration and custom enforcement between eight to nine months okay so now we're up to two years nine months yeah right and so the so the so when you went to court the immigration courts are they are they most of them in san francisco for northern california yes yeah so they would transport you down there to go to court and to argue your case and then they'd bring you back to yuba county jail right yes and so how long between court dates? Uh, months sometimes. Months. Yes. So many times in, like, you, you've met them, I've met them in Yuba County Jail, but I don't think the, the people know. There are people that have been there for two years, right? Waiting yes, yes, more Yuba. than two years. More than two years. Yeah, I think she's going to two years and a half. Three, two years and a half. Yes. And, and what, fighting her case, appealing yes. it, losing, appealing, right? Yes, yes. And, and so here we're paying maybe $100 a day. Uh, to take care of folks in that jail. Uh, I think they get paid like 90 some dollars or something a day to take care of folks, plus transport you back and forth, et cetera, mm-hmm. and do all the paperwork. Uh, so it's pretty expensive. So finally, what happened? I mean, you're not in jail today, so what happened? I, I get granted. Um, they cancel my order of deportation, and I get granted uh, protection under the United States, and um, they release me. Why did they do a, you know, that's not normal, right? That most people don't get that protection in the United States. Um, I I don't know much about immigration procedures, but I am sure that no. And and you know what? I Were they concerned about your safety? Was yes, that issue? That was an the, issue. The protection that I'm in, it's called CAT, and yeah. it's the Convention Against Torture. Yeah. And that's the protection I am in. Okay. So that, that. Brings brings us up to uh, recently. Yes. Right? So I've been out for. I got out um, May thirty first. Okay. And that that process was that a surprise to you when that all unfolded? The the decision to find you kind of knew you were probably going to be getting out, right? Yes, because on May first, the judge said, "Okay, I'm going to cancel your deportation, and I'm going to grant you protection under the Convention Against Torture." And boom, she hit the hammer, right? Yeah. But the, the prosecutor the said, gavel. "I'm going to appeal, appeal the it. judge's decision." So I wanted to sit in jail some more. Yeah. And I, I had to. I mean, there's no other. There's no other option. So I sat in jail until, until God worked His way. Yeah. Okay. And so. The the day the, when they came in, when the the uh, correctional officers in Yuba County Jail came in the middle of the night to talk to you, what did they say to you? They tapped my shoulder and said, "Pack it up, you're leaving." Yeah, that's it. That's but you it. didn't really know what you were leaving for, right? Uh, no. Even when I got to San Francisco office, they said that I was getting deported. I was like, "Wait, hold on, I can't be getting deported because." I, I, you thought you had other instructions. Well, I thought I was waiting for, I was waiting for a written notice of the prosecutor uh, to appeal. To appeal. That's so what I was waiting. So for. you rode the bus with how a bunch of other people that, that were getting that all were getting deported yeah. from the Yuba County Jail. Yeah. Yeah. So when you got there, they said, "Oh, you're going to get deported." Then something else happened, and they 
they change yeah. the tune. Then right? I then I freak out and I'm like, oh no, 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 I need to call my attorney. Da, 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 da. And then he's like, okay, hold on. And he goes in the computer and oh no, you're not getting reported. You're getting released. And I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. So in the way they released you was how? Wow, that was quite a a journey just right there. Um, they just had you ever been to San Francisco before on your own? No, living in the United States. No. So it's a totally new city to you. Yes. Yeah. So, At least you knew English. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for this, we already established I have a fed crime that I have probation for. Yeah. So they call the state where I committed my crime, where yes. I get caught for my crime. Right. And the probation officer says, uh, no, she cannot stay in California. She needs to bring her behind over here. And I said, hold on. I have a house lined up and I have this person that's going to help me and da, da, da. And he said, I don't care. <clears throat> I don't care about whatever it is that you want or whatever it is that you have lined up. I don't care. You need to come and pay here because this is where you committed your crime. And I said, hold on, but I already paid my crime. This time is probation. This is where I'm supposed to prove to you that I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to take the right steps. And he said, I don't care about your success. I need you to come here and, and, and pay me the time that you owe me. Yeah, come see me. And yeah. uh, here I'm praying in my head <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, what am I going to do? And then he says, okay, I give you an hour to get from Samsung Street to i have the address right here you want me to take it out it's okay just it's, across it's town golden gate avenue to the fed probation you building. have no idea where that is no idea no, no clue do you have any money no yeah no i don't have no money i have but a bag of paper with my belongings that i like you have letters, all your belongings letters for my kids the, the the very very small thing i have a paper bag on my hand that's and, all you have and a post-it to your name yes from being in prison and incarcerated yes. for three years nearly three years and and i have a post-it where they give me the address of the golden gate a Avenue. post-it note yeah and um and no money no money they say you if you get there in one hour and you talk to the main guy that is yeah. joshua sparks i'm not gonna forget his name um you talk to him and he approves you to stay in california you can stay but if you don't make it in one hour i'm gonna issue a warrant for your arrest if you don't call me or you call me, and then I'll I have the bus here for you booked. I just need to press enter, and you'll be right on the bus. And I said, okay, hold on, I need to make it. So I they just kicked me out the door, and I'm like, oh, blinded by Onto the sun. Onto the streets of San Francisco. Yeah. Like the sun is bright and everything. So I'm like asking people with this posted in my hand, and and I'm dressed in a jail outfit, like this gray yeah. sweat pants and, and t-shirt prison outfit there yeah. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows so i'm like excuse me ma'am do you know where this is at no i just know four blocks around i don't move that far and then i go to one man that i see coming and i said excuse me sir do you happen to know where this is at and he's like yeah yeah well, can i can you tell me how to get there yeah well you're gonna go to california avenue you're gonna take one bus and then you're gonna take the little open train and i said hold on no 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 i don't have no money I, I need to walk there. And he looked at me and he's like, you're going to walk there? And I'm like, yeah, I need to walk there. Please help me. Just tell me which way to walk. And I'll walk that way. And somehow I can ask for more directions over there. And he take, we walk like not even a block down. And there's a fire station right next to that field building. So we walked to the fire station and we started looking at the map. And he's trying to show me where am I going. And then he looked at me and said, you know what, girl? Come here. And he takes me and he pays a cab for me. Wow. And he pays $20, and he pays a cab, and he sends me to this. Uh, when the cab is driving me, there's, like, some steep hills. And I'm like, oh, my God, I would have never made it. Yeah. Like, these guys were setting me up for failure, for real. Yeah. And so I make it, and that supervisor is like, whoa, you made it? <laughs> Even he was surprised that I made it. And I was like, yep, I'm here. And then he called. A, uh, can I say who he called? I would just say that what what is yeah. his job? Um, the probation officer. Yeah, he's the, the supervisor of the probation office. Okay, and, but he called a, a person that was supporting me all this way, you know. So he calls and he asks all these questions. Oh, oh yes. you mean me? Yes. <laughs> oh, you mean he <laughs> called like, me? Yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. Okay, so okay. He it's called okay. Lou. He called Lou, and then he's asking Lou all these kinds of questions. He even wants to know which way Lou wipes. So here's Lou saying addresses and phone numbers and all these things. And and um, All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll be right back and finish this story uh, because she's got some place to go. So hang on if you want to hear the, the ending. Okay, be right back. <laughs> the
that California was never supposed to be just one state? Before the state was formed in 1850, there was discussion of forming three states instead of one. California has an area larger than seven East Coast states combined, and it takes 14 hours to drive from one end of the state to the other. California is simply too large to govern. Rural communities are being outvoted by more densely populated areas. The state of Jefferson is the solution. Please visit SOJ51. Net to show your support. Hello, Liberty Loving Patriots. This is Chrissy Ann Hall, Liberty's lobbyist and founder of Liberty First University. If Samuel Adams were still alive, he'd be sure to tune in to Live with Lou every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon, right here on KMYC 1410 a.m. The Patriot. And so should you. You can also catch my show Monday through Friday on CTNLifestyle.com. All right, you're listening to The Patriot, 1410 AM, and uh, you're listening to Lou Benninger with the Wiki Man over here, Santos Vigil. This is Live with Lou, and we have a guest today. It's kind of different. It's nice today. We normally just talk, 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 talk about all kinds of stuff, but today we've been interviewing Yoli, a young woman who has a story to tell that I thought instead of me saying, oh, they say this, I say this, I thought... Let's just talk to somebody who's lived as, as a part of the uh, smuggling operation in the United States, smuggling thousands of people, uh, smuggling drugs, and involved in all the kind of corporate business. It's, it's no longer farmers or, or workers just needing to work a little bit, but there, it's become big corporate million-dollar business bringing people and drugs into this country. Who would have thought? that we would go from drugs to moving contraband of other types and people. But we were talking here uh, uh, a little bit ago, and where where did we end up, and where are we, we heading here? Um, we finished when they call you. Okay, so go ahead. So we so if you just turned in, I don't, uh, tuned in, I don't want to go over everything because we don't have time because she's got to leave here in a minute. So uh, she, I want you to understand how the government – is having some real problems and how the system is broken uh, and it needs to be corrected and hopefully Donald Trump can help that happen. So they grant her uh, a stay in the United States to remain here and become eventually become a citizen if she likes and they released her on the streets of San Francisco with no money, a sticky note to cross the entire city of San Francisco with no money and get there within an hour and ask permission to stay in California versus another state where she was arrested. And she made it. And then, uh, so her, uh, we had met, uh, Yoli and I before this all happened. And I didn't know she, all of a sudden I got a call in, in the morning, uh, from her, from a government office in San Francisco. So you want to, then what the guy want, what, what do you want with me? Well, he wants to know uh, if I'm going to be, if, where am I going to be staying? Right. Who am I going to be with? So here it's Lou saying, okay, well, she, she can stay here and we can find her a place and da da da. So here's Lou giving all his information, yeah. everything. They want to know everything. They want to know if you're right led or left handed, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so a typical deal when you have a criminal coming out of it, people paroling or whatever, they, they, the probation officers, they, and, and so you had probation, you got two kinds of probation. Yes. You have Homeland Security probation. Yes. And you have, uh, Fed probation. What? Fed. Fed. And Ho- immigration. And immigration. Homeland Security. Two, two different sets. So they, they want to follow you for a while, right? They, they want to yes. keep track of you. So we were talking off air of something that that I was you were just informing me of as as a problem. Okay, the judge says you can stay, right? Yes. But you've been used to making your own living. You're a hard worker. You've yes. just been working in the wrong trade, right? Yes. An illegal trade. And your kids are down in Southern California with your mom. Yeah. Your mom. And all of a sudden they realize mom's out, but she can't she's not coming down there right away. So how are you making, you know, how are you supposed to make a living? What you can't just go in because a, an employer is going to ask you for some paperwork, right? Yes. So and, let's talk about that. Um, Homeland security releases me and they say, we're going to issue you a work permit. Yes. And, um, first they say it's going to be right over. Don't worry. Go wherever you're going to stay. Wait for it. 
they'll just send you one right over. Yeah. Yeah. But it. then uh, 15 days, a month passes by, and I'm like, hey, you know, like, <laughs> you want me just to sit here or, you know, I want to work. I right. want to work. And, and I see, like, right now my goal is to prove to them prove to the United States that they made no mistake in letting me stay, right? So I want to do things the right way. I want to work, pick taxes, da 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 Right. Get a um, driver's license. Create a, uh, make like, a credit, do right. what the regular citizen Everybody of the community does, does right. you know? Um, okay, so now they say, okay, well, yeah, we're waiting for your work permit, and yeah. you can't work until you get the work permit because then you'll be committing a crime. Right. So I look in the computer, see, well, this is my case number, da da da. Went two to five months, and I just checked like last Monday, yeah. and it's two to five months of waiting period. Of course, I'm praying that it will be two, but right. five months. Right. Like I would assume that okay, you kick me out the door, you allow me to stay, then give me a paperwork so I can start working and doing the right thing. Then what do you want me to do? Just sit and be a burden, or right. you know, like. I, I see that wrong. I see that they yeah. should have allowed me to work already. And create a work permit right away. Yeah. Well, Just give it to you so well, you can go to work well, and you already, support yourself. you already let me go, then right. you, I would assume you have. So it's a, bit, it's a glitch in the system, right? Yes, So what is. are you going to do? End up home? They wonder, how do these people end up homeless, right? Yeah. How do these people end up doing something illegal? It's because they don't have no employer. An employer's breaking the law. Right, if they yes. hire you, yes, correct, correct, and so they've created a situation that's impossible. Yes, yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm waiting, you know, for yeah. my work permit. So, some of the requirements they place on you at this point, and again, people that are listening said, "Hey, she needs to just buck up and do whatever they tell her to do." So, some of the requirements though are a little difficult. Like, so one one probation officer, they're not located here in Yuba Sutter area, right? No. Um, one is in Sacramento. The other one is in Roseville. Roseville. So they say, hey, come down here. Right. The first time you can't, you went there and the guy yeah. wasn't there, right? Yeah. So he said, come back yeah. another day. So you don't have a car, right? Of course. You so. don't have a driver's license. I you've never had a driver's license. Never right? had a driver's license. You know how to drive. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but you've always driven in the United States with no license, like yes. many illegals. Yes. Correct? Correct. Sure. No insurance, no license. No, I always had insurance. Oh, you bought insurance. I always did. Oh, you're very yeah. responsible. <laughs> I always did. I even had like, uh, the rental insurance cause I rented a house and yeah. I wanted my things insured. Oh, there so. you go. You're sharp. Yeah. Okay. So, but no license. They, they don't know who you are so anyway so here you are and so have you ever maybe you can ask homeland security if anybody's ever thought through how a person's supposed to survive on waiting for six months right yes i i already sent an email you sent him an email yes, asking that question because i'm i mean i am so blessed lou i have this huge network of people that just love me accept me and just support me so much I, but what if I didn't? Yeah, I don't then think you'd have made it. I don't okay. think you'd have made it. Yeah, no, me neither. Yeah, me neither. I mean, we have local people getting out of lo uh, our jails here that uh, their their network are drug users and they have a drug problem. They're trying mm -hmm. to stay clean, and yet there's not enough support for them to uh, for housing and and to get into a job. Right? Who yeah. would hire them? They're, they're a risk. You're not a risk. You're a hard worker, but. But most people look at a drug user, they can tell they're using. You know, you didn't, let, that's a question that's not clear. We never talked about, did you use, were you using drugs? No. Yeah. So very different. Yeah. You, you've stayed clean from it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but a lot of the people we work on our local jails here, and you've met them, you were in the Yuba County Jail, yeah. are, are really struggling with d deep problems. And when they get out, they really have no support system at all, right? Yes. Right? I, I happen to meet this girl that I made a beautiful friendship with and and you know uh, I know, who you know? She is, yeah. so we talked and and she has three generations as far as she knows of drug users her grandma uses her mom uses and she uses and they're here in Yuba County yes yeah. and and I mean okay well you're gonna get out of jail you've been sober but then you're gonna go back to where grandma is selling dope and using dope and how are you gonna stay clean and and of course she got out and she's not clean and, yeah. and you know it breaks my heart and yeah so you talked to me early on about sort of a transition or a transformation you where you described how you used to package heroin and things you didn't think 
you didn't think much about the end result of people using, and then you described a situation with a do, uh, with a woman and her son. Can you describe that? Um, yes. Well, all the time, all this time that I'm dealing drugs and doing all these things, I am full of excuses. That's what they want. That's what they give them. Uh, they don't ask for cupcakes. I would have brought cupcakes if they asked for cupcakes. But right. no, they asked for. I was full of excuses. Nobody pays my bills. I don't use. I don't care. You know, like I was yeah. full of excuses. So uh, when while I was fighting my Fed um, case, um, I met this woman that walks in the door, and I see her, and I'm laying down, and at the middle of the night, she starts like cramping in her jail. body. Yeah, You're in jail. and she starts screaming, and it's the most terrible thing that you can hear and and see it's a person withdrawing yeah. from heroin it's just amazingly it's scary if you have watched the movie scary movie no 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 you haven't heard nothing when these people scream your skin can translate it yeah you get like everywhere you can feel their pain it's terrible so these girls withdraw us, da 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 da. We do the process, and now oh, I'm terrified. And every time she screams, I'm like, "Oh my God, what do I do?" You know, and and it's terrible. It's terrible. So once she gets sober after a few days, a week and a half yeah. or more, right? We talked, you know, and she was at a point where she was um, putting the drug into her vein with her son. Mm -hmm. And I was, Both of them were using yes, it. and I was like, wow, when do you think that is enough? And I used to tell her like, when, where's the line that you just, you know, come on, you're getting yeah. high with your son. So she goes out in drug court. I remember her process, drug court. She goes out, stays three months out of my sight because she doesn't come back in. You know, now I'm fed, I'm sitting here, but she was county. She was coming in and out. So she were an, you were an ice hold. She was a county placement. In other no, words, I was a, a fed hold because fed I was fe fighting my federal crime okay, back then. Okay, okay. But she was a just county. a local criminal. Yeah, a local, yeah. yeah. And yeah. she walked in and it, well, the thing is that then three months later, she comes back on a weekend flash, they call yeah. it, when you violate. Yeah, dirty test and, or something. Yeah. And I said, what, what happened? And she tells me that her son died of an overdose. Yeah. You know, and I know that that kid didn't die out of the drug that I took one day, once upon a time, you know. Yeah. But hearing this story, seeing these girls, it just brings a reality to my life and how my actions actually impact society. Yeah. You know, and she goes out that weekend, and since she was local, no later than a week, they found her overdose dead in her bathroom, yeah. you know? So by the time I got sentenced, when the judge said you had anything to say, I, I had something to say. I was remorseful for my actions. I did not know the impact in society that a mother, a son, a brother, a sister, a father, how they, how the impact, somebody's suffering out of this, you know? Not only the, the addict, but the people around them and to see an addict withdraw of that heroin that I used to work for so long, you know, and I didn't know. I didn't know the impact in society yeah. that, that my actions were yeah. bringing, you know. So you got, you know, finally you, it became personal because you met yes, the woman. Yes, because I saw somebody withdrawing. Yeah. And then I would see uh, girls walk in and, I remember one time I said, did she bump into a beehive? Because she had a lot of things in her body, like, and then... Marks. Yeah, and then somebody said, no, because she picks. And I'm like, what? I mean, she just looked like she yeah. just ran into a beehive. And I joked because around Because of methamphetamines? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So seeing these people that I had no contact with before, you yeah. know, it just, wow. It just yeah. shocked me how I... I was polluting society, yeah. You know, and and it brought me a a conviction of and and I not even knew God back then. So, but yeah. I was still already feeling like, wow, is this what I do? Yeah. You know, what if it was my son or my daughter? I was mortified with my actions. How how do I do this? Yeah. This is somebody's daughter, and it could be my daughter. Yeah. You know, so. It, it was it was like a slap 
in the face with a, with a mm -hmm. big square of ice, not even an ice bucket, <laughs> a big square yeah. of ice, boom. You know, seeing these girls without their teeth, seeing these girls so skinny to the bone, you know, and being yeah. so hungry that they will pick up everybody's leftovers and eat it. And, and it's just sometimes they will come so dirty and out of their head and talking nonsense. And a few days later when, you know, the drug wears off, they're like, Oh, like starting to talk like a normal yeah. conversation and stuff. And, and this is beautiful young people. Yeah. Like if you, I would see the girls and sometimes I would even see the guys. I'm like, wow, these guys are like so handsome. What are they doing here? Why are they using drugs? You know, yeah. I've never been the cute one in the room, but, but I don't know. I don't know. Like I seen girls, they're just gorgeous, yeah. young yeah. and they're, they're, they're just you know, so polluted with drugs and... Yeah. So now, it, it, what what is your hope? What is your objective now? My objective is to live the right way. Mm -hmm. I, I plan to do everything I can, talk to whoever it is that I need to talk to, do whatever it is that I need to do to make a change. Yeah. Because I know the other side of the street. Are you going <clears> to, <throat> your family going to move up here? Is that something that you think will work out? I'm, I'm, I'm planning, but if that is God's plan, it's going to happen. And, you know, yeah, I'm hoping that my heart is aligned with God's. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, any other comments that we, we left out? I don't know. Um, okay. We well, came in. You got any questions? You, you're good. <laughs> okay. So we've been talking here for most of the show today uh, about the immigration issue. It It is a major national debate. Uh, there is most of what you hear is fra fraudulent and misinformation, political propaganda. <clears throat> and uh, even the the talk, it's, it's shameful talk of, of some uh, uh, – politicians, senators, and assembly or congressmen that or congress members that are talking about, oh, what we need to do is disband ICE because kids are being separated from their parents. It just It's just mass ignorance, and either they're ignorant or trying to be deceptive. Uh, the uh, There's some guesstimates, and I think I have it on, on another article here after Yoli leaves. We'll talk about it. There's a high percentage of so uh, these so-called children that are coming in that are gang members and they are uh they're just doing their thing they're killing people they're ripping people off doing drugs selling drugs etc so uh there's a it, there's really a, an attempt to overthrow the nation at various levels of the country one of the, one of the ways is to have a breakdown of order which would chaos would prevail and the ice agents if you remember <clears throat> under the Obama administration and the attorney general, Eric Holder, they started a gun running operation into Mexico called fast and furious. It ended up getting a, a, a border patrol agent, ICE agent killed by the name of Brian Terry. A number of people were killed and, uh, but they really didn't care about that. And so now it, the, the, the ICE agents are, as Yoli, I think, began to say early on that they're they're working pretty hard at it, but there's too much to take care of. Yeah, more I, they can have. I, even in my opinion, I would say that it's not a wall. It's more men on ground that is needed. But, yeah, so I think you brought that up one day when we were talking. Let's talk about that because Trump got got a lot of people's attention by saying we need to build a wall. But – in the video that I played a couple weeks ago, that's exactly what the farmers said, the ranchers. He said, see this wall? Their holes were cut in it, right? People took, like, metal cutters yeah. and, and flipped it up and drove a vehicle right through it. Yes. And so so your point that more we need to hire more people, If right? If you want to stop that, it's there's places where Mother Nature is going to be impossible for you guys to build a wall. It's yeah. going to be like totally impossible, like stiff cliffs. And there's places where you're not going to be able to put a wall. Right. But if you have men on ground, because even in Tijuana, I think they're separated like about a mile. 
trust and believe that like there's tons of areas where you can come through. It's open. Yeah. No so wall. So if, if you no no it's not open. Yeah. It, there's a wall and there's, there's a, a fence. Wall. Okay. But, but the border no patrols people? are are separated like for about a mile. Not enough people. No. You. This one's turning that way. You're walking right next to him. Yeah. Because he can only do so much. Right. And he can only see so much. But if you had <clears throat> one looking this way and one looking this way, maybe that would help. You yeah. Know? But they're like one officer per car and and it's... Too much. Yeah. Too it, much to do. They give them too much area for one person. So I don't know what you may have been locked up when this happened, but the president asked for the Nas- National Guard to come to the border to beef up the men. Mm-hmm. And the governor of California was really reluctant. And I don't know whether he had, do you know whether they pulled the, did California pull out their national guard? S- some of the, uh, the national guard did go down there, uh, for California's sake, but each there's the national guard or military people, each state has them, but some states refuse to cooperate with the president. Well, you would say is we need them, right? We need more people on the border. Yeah. If you want to stop all these pollution that is going on yes yeah. and and the thing is that you have to know that every time the united states busts something like they busted um the you know now they x-ray the cars yes well me personally i was long time ago very long time ago very long time ago they were opening the coolers the ice coolers and they were putting drugs in between that was long time ago the well, ice coolers. What do you mean? Yeah, like you go, you the where you put ice and and uh, ice sodas. chest. Yeah, those ice ones. chest. Yeah. Uh, so that was like long time ago. I was so young when that was like the thing, you know. But then on 2015, 14, uh, they busted one car that had like a special compartment, and I said, "Well, the X-ray is getting really good at the border. Guess what? I just brought back the coolers." Open the coolers, put the dope in between the walls, seal it back up. You mean the, put the, ice. Wall, the wall of the plastic or whatever? Yeah. You inside, you put the dope inside yeah. you that. Because it, it has like a little foam thing. Yes. So you scrape that off and you put the line up the kilos, foam yeah. it up back again, put it back together, put some ice, a few fishes, put some f- fishing poles on the back of the truck, just bring it right over. Got it. So every time there's one thing busted, yes, they, you, they somebody's make adjustments. coming up with, with a new, new idea, one, you know, and, and, and you'd be surprised how much drug comes in through the San Isidro port of entry and yeah. the Otay. Like, they say that a hundred thousand cars go through there every day. Essentially a city moves through there every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Just in, and they may not all be transporting yeah. drugs, no. but you have to think of, think through every car, right? And the thing is, like, let's say per boss, let's say per clan, yes, maybe they're putting around eight cars a day. Eight cars mm-hmm. in that whole mm-hmm. deal per and, per uh, cartel or group. Per, per group. Group per in the group. cartel. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, so, Smugglers. So, so from different clan. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's say it could come with forty pounds, or it could come with two. It, it don't matter. The, yeah. the thing is that it's this coming. amount of cars. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the film I showed or I played the audio for a couple of weeks ago, they they interviewed some border people and they just pointed to the ocean. They said they're flying it in. <laughs> they're they're going through the ocean. I used to come through the water too. Yeah. I, I'm a mermaid in those waters. <laughs> so you were going you were swimming? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I would well, just they were talking about bo- boats that went so far out that they needed ships to go out there and check them out but, yeah or you or drop the, them, the tunnels you drop them with the androids yeah you fly them with an android and it's low enough so a radar won't get it but it's high enough so the eye won't see it and you it, you need an iphone for that yeah and um you fly it and you drop it and somebody picks it up and there's right. tons of ways yeah you know all right we're going to take a break i think we have an hour to go but uh, yoli is going to hit the road and so thank you so much for coming in thank we you appreciate for having me. yeah you did a great job we thank appreciate you. it okay <laughs> All right, welcome back. You're listening to Live with Lou, and you've been listening to us for a couple of hours this morning. We're we're continuing on here for uh, 
uh, let's see, about an hour, and then we're going to have a sports talk show for a couple hours, and then later on tonight, Johnny Radio is coming in from Nevada County, who used to hang out down here with us, and he's going to do another sports show. So if you like sports, uh, the guys are good that come right after me at noon. They, they're very entertaining, and they know a lot about the topic of whatever kind of sports you're interested in. And you can call in and yak at them and ask them questions. So, uh, so at noon to two, and then you can jump back at six and get a plenty of sports. Well, we were talking most of the day today, which we, uh, did quite differently. We normally don't do a lot of interviews. People say, Lou, can we, can you interview me? I'm running for office. I said, don't interview politicians. I haven't got time only here once a week. So, but I thought, uh, interview, interviewing Yoli, uh, today to get a true story about life below the border and how people that are involved in the trade or the business of smuggling people and drugs, how they're doing it. And this baloney about disadvantaged people in Mexico that, uh, somehow we're just abusing them is just a bunch of crap. So I want to talk a little bit more about it, but I want to get at it from a different angle. Judicial Watch, <coughs> who is a, a nonprofit that they are kind of watchdogs, Judicial Watch makes sense, watchdogs on the government. They file a lot of Freedom of Information Act documents to, they want to look at the actual reports and documents that government creates to give us an idea of what's going on. And uh, so they... Uh, requested a report from Health and Human Services and that revealed that <coughs> unaccompanied alien children processed during the Obama years included violent criminals, drug smugglers, and human traffickers. The report they got included 1,000 significant incident reports uh, revealing uh, unaccompanied alien children, UACs they called them, admitting to murdering for the cartels. These are children, supposedly, that are UAC refugees, unaccompanied children. These are what we call euphemisms. Refugees admitted to murdering for the cartel, prostitution, and sexual pred predation. Now, that's one thing that I didn't ask Yoli about, but I have articles that talk about, in fact, we played a clip a couple weeks ago about a tree on this farmer's on this rancher's property called the rape tree and the smugglers would rape the women that they were bringing across, uh, threatening them that if they didn't give them sex, they would kill them or do something else with them, turn them in. And they hung their underwear in this tree, uh, to mock them. And so it isn't unusual. We didn't get into a lot of it. Yoli was actually smuggled, uh, or, uh, hot taken hostage and shot. But she said it's a common practice to make a living smuggling and, and uh, extorting money from people. So um, the report that Judicial Watch got a hold of cites incidents of U.S. government contractors' employees allegedly assaulting unaccompanied alien children. Hold that thought. So uh, this uh, Judicial Watch released 224 pages of documents containing nearly 1,000 summaries of sig what they call SIR, SIRS, S-I-R-S, Significant Incident Reports, uh, from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services revealing unaccompanied alien children processed during uh, the Obama administration, that and those very people admitted raping, murdering, smuggling prostitutes, smuggling, prostituting, and bringing in people. So I'll, I just want to give you a flavor of this because – what's being portrayed by the liberal media or the, what Donald Trump has coined the phrase fake media is, uh, totally deceptive. In fact, I've been at, at, uh, social gatherings where people are all up in arms. Oh my God. Can you believe what they're doing at the border to those poor children? If they only knew that they only knew. So all they have to do is go over to the local juvenile hall to meet some murderers and, uh, people that have been in gang activity, but the MS-13 people, it's interesting when it's one thing when we have American citizens 
that have run off the tracks and you're trying to get them back on the track socially. It's another thing when we're opening the borders to people that do it for, for a living, hold that thought. So the UACs unaccompanied alien children, they call them, right? When I think of children, I think of kids six or seven years of age. These aren't children people. So they admitted to murdering. They belong to the MS 13, uh, group out of San Salvador. Uh, they threatened others with rape. Um, so, uh, UACs, they interviewed UACs who were raped or molested en route to the United States. As I mentioned, the rape tree on that farmer's property, just inside the border. I think it was down in Arizona. Uh, so they're getting raped on the way to the United States or raped in the United States before they make it to a safe destination. They're assaulted, they're murdered, their, their possessions are stolen from them. Uh, it is, it is funky. Now we are helping that by not strengthen the border by, as Yoli mentioned, she said, what the United States needs to do use is to up the number of border patrol agents because she was expert at avoiding the few border patrol that are, uh, dispatched along the border. They also found, uh, U S government contractors or employees allegedly assaulting or having sexual relations with UACs. So let me give you some examples. A male UAC at the shelter in Fairfield, California, admitted that he was forced to kill while working for the Gulf Cartel in Mexico. Another male being cared for at the Heartland International RC facility reported that he had been an MS-13 gang member for a year before coming to the U.S. A male UAC cared for, also cared for at the same center, uh, reported to the staff that he had been made to kill three people by the drug cartel. Another male housed at the Kids Peace Shelter uh, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, reportedly told another UAC there, I'm a rapist, I'm going to rape you. A UAC at Morrison Paso, that's a Morrison Child and Family Services Center uh, in Portland, Oregon, informed a youth care worker that all of the kids here at Paso are snorting white pills and that some residents had brought the pills into the facility and all the residents are snorting, in other words, some sort of amphetamines. Okay. A male UAC in the, in the Heartland ICRC uh, facility said he was an MS-13 gang member who had been selling drugs. He told social workers that the reason the gang members made the kids use drugs was to get them addicted. A female UAC at Sandy Pines, that's Jupiter, Florida, facility attacked a staff member with a chair after being told to stop inappropriate sexual behavior toward another uh, uh, UAC uh, member at the facility. After being restrained, she threatened to stra stab an unidentified person with a knife she kept in her room. Uh, another one, a male UAC, again, that's unidentified. Uh, unaccompanied alien child, supposedly child. These aren't children, folks. They're young adults. There's a Baptist child and family services shelter in Baytown, Texas. Uh, said he'd worked as a human smuggler. He charged 6000 to 8000 per person he, that, that he brought into the United States. Now, if I just said that without you just listening to Yoli, you might think I'm blowing smoke over here, but Yoli actually uh, said people were paying a lot much more, a lot more than that, actually. Uh, another uh, one uh, was the daughter of a coyote, a human smuggler, and reportedly was passing information to her father via telephone from the uh, the shelter. Again, there is a, a list that's probably on my sheet here, uh, two feet long. Uh, that is, uh, it's gnarly. It's just gnarly, and it's people. It's one thing when you raise kids and you have a kid out of one kid out of three go sidewards and do something really stupid like beat an old person up, steal from people, get people strung on heroin, deal dope, uh, murder somebody, rape somebody. That's one thing if they're citizens of the United States, you have to deal with that. They're your people. You feel sad about it. It's a tragic situation for everybody involved. It's another thing when you open the borders to people that are criminals. And that's what's going on here. 
in spite of what the media said, that is what's going on here. The media is describing situations where kids are being held in cages. Those are being those are staged uh, fiascos that people doing demonstrations bring a cage out and put a kid in it as if it's it's happening all over the United States. It's not. Uh, the The Obama administration presided over what I would call a humanitarian and public safety nightmare in its handling of UACs, unaccompanied alien children. Tom Fitton, F-I-T-T-O-N, is the president of Judicial Watch. That is what he's proclaiming. The Obama administration strategized, designed, recruited, and set up the onslaught on our southern border uh, by people from all over uh, Mexico and Central and South America. Uh, the incident reports, according to Tom Fitton, also support the Trump administration's contention, contention that the UAC crisis, which continues, you remember, I would never forget it, you remember this very well, Santos, when he made the initial speech, and he said we need to, when he was running for president, announced his run, and he said, I will close the border because there are rapists and murderers, and I have Mexican close friends of mine that I have dinner with, that absolutely went nuts when he said that and went on Facebook and totally mistook and misappropriated what he meant. But Tom Fitton, who has the documents from the the Health and Human Services from the years under the Obama administration, is saying the insert reports support the Trump administration's belief and contention that this crisis, which continues today, includes murderers, rapists, drug smugglers, and human traffic traffickers being routinely allowed into the United States. Yoli, who I got to know um, through the Yuba County Jail, and then uh, when she was released into the United States uh, under her protection, uh, she has uh, been, talks with her has, has been an eye-opener confirming what the Trump government is saying is the truth. So we're getting a person that's on the ground who made a living at this, made a great living at it. She had very nice cars. She had the nicest things you would want uh, living in the United States once she got settled and learned the English language. And she lived quite the life until she was arrested for tra uh, transporting drugs. So uh, the Judicial Watch began investigating the, the uh, voluntary – Re releasing of criminals in the United States by the Obama administration in 2014. You remember the election was in 2016. So these are the last years of the Obama administration where they were desperately trying to overthrow this country. And what I mean by that is to let millions of illegals into this country uh, to begin voting and to take over every institution of this country. Uh, they've already damaged the country. It, it it remains to be seen whether we can still get a handle on it. But the two in 2014, uh, the wave uh, when a wave of unaccompanied alien children swamped the southwest border. They've been the Judicial Watch began looking at that. Uh, at that time, the controversial HHS contract with Baptist Children and Family Service. Now I want you to catch that. What's happening here is. Religious organizations have become prostitutes for the government. These religious organizations who were standing up and agreeing with the Obama government and with the swamp or the deep, what they call the deep state, lying about uh, these unaccompanied minors being abused, the Baptists, the Lutherans, the Catholics are making hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts to process these kids. Uh, the, con the HHS contract, according to the Judicial Watch, described Baptist Children and Family Services providing shelter to children at two military facilities. Uh, th through the investigation, Judicial Watch learned that the Baptist Children and Family Services was providing consumer electronics as, quote, essential items to the children. Another essential items I would think would be hygiene items, medicine, food, clothing, right? Doctor care. Those would be, but along with that, they were providing consumer electronic items. And I would think those were like be 
some kind of games on technology game, you know, maybe even phones, games on phones, game boys. I've heard those. I don't even know what I'm saying there. I don't uh, kids just have all the technology games since that time. Judicial watch has been investigating incidents of violence, drug trafficking, human trafficking, and other criminal activities as, as well as whether innocent children were being abused in, uh, in these shelters. So, uh, I hope that the, uh, the show we did is a little different. You know, people, they get used to, they give me their input. I don't like what you did there. <laughs> you talk too much. You have too many commercials. You have too many clips. You went to, everybody has their opinion of what they want me to do. So anyway, uh, I thought it was relevant to what's going on in the United States right now. So there you have it in other news. Uh, I, and the liberals hate this because when you say this, they think you're taking food, you're taking people's food away from them. The, the title is food stamp usage drops below 40 million for the first time in eight years. I want you to think about that right wow, there. 40 million. 40 million. Drop before four. It was up to almost 50 million under Obama, right? 49 and something, 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 something. Obama just opened the, the floodgates for anybody that wanted to get stamps or the EBT card to get it. But what's happened is uh, some s governors in states have said, you know, for single men, you need to come to work for, you know, they've started putting some requirements. If you're, if you're doing drugs, we're not going to give you cards. There, a few states have started doing that. The other thing has been is, one person would get food stamps for the whole family, but in the family, there would be illegals. So they began looking at that and been, they began hiring more investigators to proof whether the applications are actually honest. Then what they've done is they've gone into these places like some of these seven elevens that are owned by foreigners that are actually buying the EBT cards. In fact, <clears throat> uh, I don't know whether Yoli told me this or I read this, but at the border, drug dealers have stacks of EBT cards that they have taken in payment for drugs, and they'll give them like 50 cents on the dollar. And so they try to pay people back with them because there's a value on them because essentially the problem with drug sales is you have to launder the money. Like where'd you get, where are you going to put all this money? You take it to the bank. They say, well, where'd this money come from? Right. So you end up with EBT cards because you have drug addicts turn it over EBT cards. And instead of like if there's five hundred dollars on there, they'll only give you a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars of drugs for the card. Well, you end up with a five hundred dollar card. Right. So. Uh, so there's all this corruption. So all of a sudden. Illegals have dropped off the food stamp system and people have been dropping off because they were thinking that the government would track them and catch them and then file a case against them, then they would deport them, right? Not a catch and release. If they've been up here for a while, they'll have to serve their time, then they'll deport them. So the other thing that's going on is that a lot of people are just going to work because there's good jobs out there. And uh, it's like my friend that just got a job at uh, Monty Hecker at Elite Universal Security Dispatching. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, she's not going to be getting as much. She may get some food stamps starting out, but she's not going to get as much because she's going to be earning some money. So the USDA data, now you might think, what's the U uh, United States uh, Department of Agriculture have to do with food stamps? Well, oddly enough, instead of food stamps being under health and human services and with wel welfare, they got it under the farm, the farm bills. It's always very deceptive. So the USDA said, that 39 under it's under uh, just almost 40,000 uh, it dropped below 40,000 were enrolled in supplemental nutrition assistance program snap and they administer the food stamps what we used to call stamps but now there are EBT card and electronic benefit uh, transfer right so you just you just empty it and then a miracle happens Shazam at a certain time of the month, it just it just got gets fat again. It inflates again, and uh, so that's April 2018. The last time enrollment dipped below 40 million was in February 2010. Isn't that amazing? Right before 
Obama took over, I think. So we're going to take a break, right? Do I have time to get a cup of coffee or we're going to go right into? Okay, we're going to. Okay, we're going to break. Somebody else is going to talk here for a minute. When I turned 18, I couldn't wait to vote. After all, voting is a privilege for all Americans, right? Then I did the math. Did you know that the northern third of California only has three out of 80 seats in the assembly and three out of 40 seats in the Senate? Northern California has no representation and my vote doesn't count. Splitting from California and forming the state of Jefferson is the only remedy. Please visit SOJ51.net for more information. Please donate now to help restore representation. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. Good morning, Jeffersonians. This is Jake McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution.com. The California flag may bear the words California Republic, but it is anything but a republic. To learn more about what a true republic is, visit the Institute on the Constitution.com and be sure to tune in to Live with Lou every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon right here on KMYC 1410 AM, The Patriot. All right. Well, you've been listening to Live with Lou, and uh, we're coming to a a close today in a few minutes, and then we'll have some sports talk for you for a couple hours. This is KMYC 1410 AM, The Patriot, and we hope you have uh, enjoyed the topic today has been a little different. We've kind of spent a lot of time on one topic, which is the deception and the revolution that's going on in this country, the deception by the politicians wanting to overthrow this country and, uh, the lies told about what's happening at the border and the denigration by the Democrats of the wonderful people that work for ice. I actually work in, in, uh, I see them. I don't work with them, but I see them Every week, I'm in at the Yuba County Jail. They're very dedicated. They're fine people. They work there at the jail every week, working with inmates and caring for them, caring for their cases, making sure that their rights are, it's amazing. People don't even belong here legally, that their rights are protected. Hold that thought. And so um, I just want to mention again, since we talked about the first of the show, <clears throat> if you if you came in at halfway through Yoli's interview, <clears throat> it went on for an hour and a half or so, and you could catch the whole thing at, uh, at whenever you want at one eye blind media, or you could probably record it off there. If you were interested and you want to just hold on to it, one eye blind media and on YouTube, that's four separate words, not like a website, one eye blind media, Chris Starkey puts our show on there. It's great to have Chris's help. And you can just go there and look for the live with Lou and then pick the show. And this show is obviously the 21st of, of uh, July. So uh, I also want to make sure and, and give plenty of credit to the constitutional conservatives uh, that are supporting our show and to remind you to tune in to those folks, guys and gals, that will be on tomorrow, Sunday, and at what they call the Yuba Sutter Political Spotlight, and and that is 1 to 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And so if you want to call in, you can there to find out where they're headed, like what's up, what what's, what's changing, where they're headed, what their goals and dreams are. They also do some teaching on the Constitution that is really important, and it's something you can get done free. If I had children today, uh, Tammy Reichard teaches, uh, I think she moderates, teaches and moderates a video series on the Constitution, and she, I think they do it out at Church of Glad Tidings in uh, North Yuba City. If I had children today, they're not teaching that to your kids 
in the public schools. If you have a child in your homeschooling them, that's an easy way to get your kid being an expert on the Constitution. And uh, knowledge is power, folks. And and uh, Tammy Reichardt is one smart lady. And I would really recommend uh, you plug your youngsters uh, into that or your oldsters into that class. If you never really got a, a grip on the Constitution, or maybe you did and now you've forgotten it like me, stuff just kind of falls out the bottom of my brain like a colander, I need a refresher all the time. So check that out. You also heard a commercial here for Jake McCauley. And Jake's got all kinds of materials for homeschoolers. You can get uh, DVDs. You can tap into programs he has. Chris Ann Hall, who basically was going to be canned in the, by the state of Florida because of her activities, pro, uh, pro-conservative pro activities, Tea Party-type activities. So she decided she prayed about it with her husband, and he just said, let's just quit and let's just help the country understand what the Constitution means. Chris Ann Hall is another one. These people are patriots. They're they're brilliant, and uh, you got to check them out. The, so thank you to the uh, Yuba Sutter Constitutional Republicans, or we also call them the Sutter Beach Tea Party Patriots. Also, I want to mention again, Elite Universal Security uh, out in uh, Yuba County. And if you need some protection or somebody keeps stealing your stuff or vandalizing your stuff or you can't figure out how to figure out how you can't figure out what's going on in and around your business you keep losing stuff missing stuff people are like pilfering stuff people are doing stupid stuff people are harassing your customers i'll tell you uh monty hecker will solve that if you'll call him at seven four nine zero two eight zero and if you're looking for a job and you want to work your way into law enforcement they got classes online if you go to api hyphen academy api hyphen academy.com you can look at there's that tells you how much the classes are uh, you know all kinds of information about the classes that they teach there's probably 10 of them of different topics to become uh get into the the security business the guard business and then maybe even work your way into becoming full-time law enforcement so uh check all that stuff out i wanted to we we got oh we got 15 minutes thank you jesus come on we're going to get into this i want to talk about i i'm just totally confused and uh you know i always say you, you know liberal will tell you it's raining he'll be pissing on your boots it happens all the time on one page of the paper it will say hold on here i have now lost i i lost my menu hold on here let me get down i forgot my menu at home i got so exasperated trying to get over here i lost my mind and then i lost my little menu i created but uh, well let me preface it by this i was at the trauma intervention program monthly training meeting which i conduct to keep us all tuned up and uh by the way, let me just say this. Ada Terry, who runs the child bereavement group for Sutter North, there's Jesus and God, the Holy Spirit, and then there's Ada Terry sitting right next to him. Ada is amazing. She came and spoke to TIP volunteers because we refer a lot of youngsters to her support group because they've been hurt because mom or dad or uncle or brother got, got killed in any way you can imagine and they're having a difficult time and ada terry took the program over she's the third director since sutter north began that program sutter north by the way is a great philanthropic group in our yuba sutter area but they serve northern california and they fund this you can send your kid to this uh care group support group for free and they have a series of classes that they'll it's a play and art and counseling really great as young as two and three year old kids and and teenagers right and they'll they'll work with the parents as well anyway we had her speak last night and she just rocked the, the rocked the whole group but when people started filing into the meeting so a couple of tip volunteers were only half but they used to be and i was looking at them i said man what happened to them i thought did they get an operation or something but they lost weight 
and these a couple ladies. I thought, man, you gals are looking hot because they lost a lot of weight and they were feeling it. They were smiles. They were so happy because it's not easy to lose weight, is it? it? You know, and so they have they have worked. They just lost a big bunch of weight, and I think their husbands were like smiling from ear to ear. And I was so happy for them. I was congratulating them. And they, I said, go for it, girl, do, do some more if you want to. So one of the things that's troubling to me is that on one page of the paper, you'll read about how nearly half of Americans are battling to lose weight. According to the centers for disease control, half of Americans are battling to lose weight. And, um, uh, for it says an estimated 49.1 percent of americans are weighing way too much and uh, and they are obese some of them are obese that means way big right and uh, so then you read about the problem of overweight and and we're the fattest country in the world and da 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 then on another page you realize you read that parents are so poor that their kids are insecure about the next meal. They call it food insecurity. And so now these socialists, it's all socialist gig, right? Like my parents worked, they were blue collar workers and I never missed a meal. It may, it may not have been fancy, but it was good. It tasted good. And it may have been a, tuna sandwich right and a glass of milk or it may have been some cereal in the morning or some toast and cereal and a cup of coffee i like coffee way back then even I, when i drank my first cup of coffee when i was like the one and a half so then we had a nice meal together at the house and uh but i notice now everybody's on this bandwagon and basically it's coming through the school system, which is a socialist system. The school system, this socialist school system run by unions is the most screwed up. I, every time I say this, people say, Oh Lou, you hate all school teachers. I don't, I don't hate all school teachers. I have lots of friends that are, I, I love them. In fact, I have, I work with, in fact, I was on the phone today with Yuba County office of education talking to Mora over there and Mora Martinez. She was so nice to me and we're trying to help a lady get her, uh, an adult lady, get her transcript so she can get her GED. She was so kind. And so I am not against, there's some wonderful people teaching in the school system because they want to teach kids and, and the government has a, it's got a monopoly on the school kids. They all, oh, they can go anywhere they want. Yeah. And then you got to go pay it yourself because they took all our money and they won't give any of it back to let parents choose to go to a better school somewhere else. Right. It's kind of like the government saying you can go down and eat at Taco Bell and they'll pay for it. And you say, well, I don't really care for Taco Bell. So they say, screw you. They say, well, can I just take the money you paid for me at Taco Bell to buy, buy me lunch and go to McDonald's? No, you can't go to McDonald's. You can't have choice. We believe in this country that Taco Bell is, is the righteous food to eat. So forget about it and don't try to ruin it because you're just anti-government. If you don't want to eat at Taco Bell, that's the same thing as forcing you. They take your money, they give it to teachers unions and schools, and they force your kids to go. If, in fact, if you don't go to Taco Bell, if they're, if the government's running Taco Bell, then they say, well, we'll cite you and arrest you. It's a misdemeanor. That's what they do to school kids. You know, the kid doesn't want to go to school. You know what they tell you? Most kids, they don't want to go to school. You know what they say? Why? They say it's boring. I talk to kids in juvenile hall all the time. So I don't want to sit all day. In fact, I got a kid in, even in Vietnam, young girl I'm helping. She said, Lou, I just want to go to work. Why don't we just let kids go to work? What's wrong with that? Teach them, teach them on the way. You know what I find out when you let people go to work, they figure out, oh, I should, if I knew this, I think I want to go back to school and become a mechanic instead of just drive, right? I want to go learn something. Then they have, they're, then they're motivated. And so, but, but so, uh, 
So what you have is this monopoly. So now we, we have the social school system. So if we want to say we want to change kids' view of the Constitution, they say, oh, yeah, we won't teach it anymore. Just have them forget about it. We don't need no, we don't need no stinking Constitution. Or we want to change the way to look at sexuality. Say we won't allow them to have a straight pride shirt on. You can have a gay pride shirt, but you can't have a straight pride shirt. It's a Jesus free zone. You can't say, I love Jesus. You can put, I love Satan, but you can't have, I love Jesus, right? No, 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 no. You can't have that. You can have a prayer rug and they'll open a little, a little prayer room for Muslims, but you try to get a bunch of Christians to have a little Bible study. Oh my God, we can't bring religion on campus. You know, it's just, it's totally twisted. It's screwed up and twisted. So finally, you once in a while, you'll find an exception like Doug Eshman over at Mary Kovalod School in Marysville. There's a Christian guy, and teachers love to work with Doug because he treats them right, and they love to see kids uh, do well, and he's got one of the highest-performing schools in the two counties. And I heard the other day, I talked to Doug's nephew, and he says, I think Doug's coming back for another year. I thought, man, that guy's 150 years old, so, but he's going to be back. So I notice in the paper, uh, July 10th, and it lists all the places that will feed your kids if you don't want to feed them. So here's what they, and this is such a bunch of crap that they print and put in the paper. Now, again, the Appeal Democrat didn't come up with the pitch. That would be the people that are feeding, that they're deciding that kids are so screwed up and the parents are so screwed up that parents could not be trusted to properly feed their kids enough each day. I mean, we are so struggling in this country. You know, honestly, people need to fly to a third world country if they want to see struggles. There is food everywhere in this country. Be, you, you, I see most kids, they're fat, 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 fat. They got rolls on their arms, right? We got kids, the little kids are so fat, they got diabetes. And so... On one hand, we got fat kids. Oh, they got to get out, get their butts off away from those computers and video games and stuff. Then on the other side, we're saying they have food insecurity. And parents are so effed up that they can't even feed their kids breakfast and lunch. So, so what we do is help them be more screwed up. We just say, go do dope. Go take that money and spend it on stupid stuff. Like, why don't you go out to the Calusa Casino and blow your food money? And the government, that mean you and me, because my kids, they're done big folks, and they're feeding themselves. So you and me, you and I, are funding these feeding troughs at these various schools that supposedly, on all these articles, like, the Appeal Democrat just kisses up. Oh, yeah, these kids, they're, oh, yeah, they're just lapping it up. Come on, kids will eat. They'll eat five times a day. Just keep putting the food out. They'll be 150 pounds and they'll only be in the first grade. So we got like, oh, there's like dozens and dozens of sites. How did we survive all these years without schools feeding us all through the summer? It's just like, what? You think these kids are roaming loose like a loose dog without a tag on them? And they're, they, they can't find anything to eat. I, I don't, I, we're arguing it. Who's paying for, you know, who's paying for this It's coming out of the U S department of agriculture. I think same way that people get that snap money from it's amazing. We don't think parents can do Jack diddly. All we can think that they can screw each other and produce one. But once they produce the kid, then we think, you know, I've had, I used to be on the board of Yuba County office of education. I heard administrators say over there, not Rick Teagarden. He, he didn't believe that, but they would say, Oh, if they just leave the kids with us, we got this right. I thought, okay, you are a nice person. And I think you're a pretty good teacher. You're a, not a parent for these kids. They belong to their parents and that family and whatever their family gig is. Some kids went one, the, the parent lottery, other kids have mediocre parents, et cetera. Pit kids work through it. That's life. But to think that the school system is somehow, it's like, Hey, we got to deal with Jim Whitaker, right? He's a 20 some years, the big titty grabber, right? 
we're, we're going to tout our school system. We had a gal over uh, at Yuba County Office of Education after I had left the board who was at T.E. Matthews School having sex with a gangbanger. Kid was 15 years old. She's 10 years older than him, having sex with him. Do you know that there is an epidemic of women teachers having sex with boys throughout the United States? There's thousands and thousands of incidents. Do you know something? Some people I know, acquaintances of my friends, have, have done the wrong thing. They committed a sex act with a kid or a teenager. One got 10 years. One got 16 years. I want you to think about that. You think, oh, they should, they should have given them 100 years. Okay, hold that thought. You know how much some of these women are getting for having sex with 10, 12-year-old, 13, 14-year-old boys? Six months. And maybe they'll lose their teaching license. Who cares? Right? That's better than going to prison, right? Maybe they, or they get suspended or lose their job. They get six months. They've been having routine sex with a boy in the school, you think, and you, you think, you know, I've had people, I get a kick out of it. People say, I don't trust your nursery at glad tidings. I mean, I'm, or, or the Sunday school or whatever. And, and we got armed guards out there, dude, at glad tidings. We got people packing weapons, protecting our kids from exes that want to come in and just like steal a kid or do something stupid. We've never lost a kid, right? We, we've, we've been, we were the first church in the Yuba Sutter area to ever fingerprint and background check all our children's workers many, many years ago, decades ago. I've had parents say, oh, well, I, I don't want to trust. Then they'll send their kids to public school. Holy mackerel, man. You talk about a little bit of mental illness there, a big disconnect where the, where the, uh, where the coach of the soft or the coach of the ba baseball team is screwing the parents to get the kid. If the kid wants a better place on the, uh, the roster, get to play more mom can screw the coach. I'm not making it up. You think that's a good deal or, or we got teachers that are having sex with kids or molesting kids like Jim Whitaker. And now he's asking, and we were just talking about it at the break. Wicked man brought it up, said, did you see where Whitaker's trying to get a golden parachute? And it, it's like, bless me because of the great job I did. See, the unions, if you're still breathing, you can be a child molester, throat cutter, and they'll be kicking you down the money because they're the unions. You think that's good for our society, by the way? When are we just going to tell the unions to go to hell? get out of town. We not or, or quit sending our kids to these union schools. It's terrible. Unless you can find a school like Doug Eschman's. Do you know oh, we're we're done here. It's eleven fifty nine. He's he's looking at me like quit. Well quit quit already. Okay, we're we're gone. We'll see you next week. And as far as we know, we're gonna be live. All right. Catch you later.